Bună seara, stimați telespectatori. Sunt Denis Rifa. Începe emisiunea 40 de întrebări. Iată regulile emisiunii. Îi voi adresa invitatului meu 40 de întrebări. Pentru fiecare întrebare va avea două minute să răspundă. Dacă îi mai rămâne timp, iar eu consider că este necesar, invitatul poate folosi timpul rămas pentru a răspunde la celelalte întrebări. De asemenea, invitatul meu are dreptul să refuze să răspundă. Să începem. Îl am alături de mine pe Andrew Tate. Bună seara, bine ați venit! Hello. Despre dumneavoastră știm așa, sunteți unul dintre cei mai influenți și controversați oameni din mediul online, celebru pentru luxul afișat, dar și pentru părerile misogine. Aveți miliarde de vizualizări pe rețele de socializare și sute de mii de cursanți pe platformele din online. Numai puțin controversat sunteți și în offline, unde v-ați câștigat celebritatea în momentul arestării dumneavoastră de către DICOT pentru trafic de persoane, viol, lovire și alte violențe. Ne-am propus ca prin intermediul celor 40 de întrebări să-l cunoaștem pe campionul de kickboxing, King Cobra, pe omul din spatele imaginii de mascul alfa și să aflăm dacă poate închisoarea să reducă la tăcere o voce vehementă și virală. Sunteți pregătit? I'm ready. Bine, începem. După 92 de zile petrecute în spatele gratilor, pe 31 martie 2023 ați fost eliberat și plasat în arest la domiciliu. Iar la începutul lunii august, instanța a decis să fiți cercetat în libertate, sub control judiciar, măsură care vă permite să ieșiți din raza județelor București și Ilfov, însă nu și de pe teritoriul României. Presa a notat că prin impunerea controlului judiciar, procurorii au încercat să împiedice o eventuală fugă în străinătate, mai ales că în trecut jurnaliștii notau că aveți conturi bancare în 19 țări și în numai puțin de 5 pașapoarte. Ținând cont că ați susținut de mai multe ori că vă place România și că aveți încredere în sistemul judiciar din această țară, urmează întrebarea Vă simțiți în siguranță în România? That's a very good question. And I do feel safe in Romania societal. I think the society is a very safe society. Romanians are beautiful people. It's a religious society. You can see and feel God here. I don't feel safe from the law. I have to be very honest. I think that the procedure which has been applied to me is unfair. I don't see why it has been done. Nobody wins. The two victims in my case are saying they're not victims. Decot looks bad. Romania looks bad. Certainly, they have tried very hard to catch a big fish. The prosecutor has been desperate to put me in jail because I'm famous, not because I've done anything wrong. And it's kind of upsetting to me. I have to be very honest with you because I've tried very hard to represent Romania in a positive light and always speak positively about Romania to the entire world, which doesn't have the best international reputation. I've only ever said good things about this country. And then for a prosecutor to come along and decide he wants a big fish and to put me in jail for no reason, not because I've done anything wrong, but purely because I'm famous. I think that makes Romania look bad. It makes Decot look bad. There's no victims in the case, so nobody is being saved in any way. It's just a net negative for everybody. And the Romanian people respect me and love me, and everybody who sees me apologizes to me and knows I've done nothing wrong. So I feel very safe in Romania. Yes, it's a beautiful country. I just decided to live here for a reason. It's very beautiful people. I just think it's a shame that one prosecutor on a ridiculous quest for fame can uh, damage the country's reputation so heavily. Mergem mai departe. În ianuarie 2023, aproximativ 500 de tineri au protestat în capitala Greciei, cerând eliberarea dumneavoastră și a fratelui dumneavoastră, Tristan Tate. În mediul online, printre cei care s-au arătat contrariați de arestarea dumneavoastră, s-a numărat și impresara de fotbal Ana Maria Prodan, care a scris pe o rețea de socializare așa. Imaginea și munca lor de o viață sunt distruse pentru ce? De ce să arestăm înainte să avem toate probele incriminatorii? Dacă nu se dovedesc acuzațiile, cine mai șterge demența creată de media din viața acelor oameni? Dumneavoastră ați reacționat imediat. Vă citez. Mulțumesc, Ana Maria Prodan, pentru că susții dreptatea. Urmează întrebarea? Vă așteptați la mai multă susținere? I think the entire world supports me. Absolutely nobody believes the narrative they have tried to paint. Even the victims they found and put in this file themselves are saying they're not victims. They're on television saying we're not victims, let Andrew go. Nobody believes them. Nobody on the public believes them. Nobody on the internet believes them. The entire thing is a farce. 
And I genuinely feel bad, not for myself, because I'm a man who's had a very difficult life and I understand trials and tribulations and I'm not scared of jail. I'm not scared of assassination. I'm not scared of anything. That's not who I am. I feel genuinely bad for the country of Romania. What rich person, what person of wealth will now move to this country and set up a life knowing that DCOP prosecutors in their desperate bid to try and make themselves famous will destroy a man's life and reputation at will and face no repercussion? What rich German or Italian man will ever move to this country? We talk about Romania being a beautiful country full of beautiful people, beautiful natural resources, amazing nature, a gorgeous place where anybody should come and feel free and safe inside of a democratic society. Who is going to come and set up a life here after what they've done to me? Romania has lost years worth of positive reputational building. For what? To save who? There's not even a single victim in the file. The two girls they highlighted are on my side. The entire thing is asinine, it's crazy. And it's ridiculous to me that one person in their quest for a career, in their quest to try and for forward their job, can do this much damage to an entire nation. I, I'm mind blown. Mulțumesc. Mergem mai departe. În 2021 ați înființat o platformă online prin care împărtășiți tinerilor contra unei taxe de înscriere de 49,99 de dolari, noțiuni de copywriting, freelancing, e-commerce sau criptoinvestiții. Tot în mediul online ați creat și o comunitate privată unde, după ce achită o taxă de 7,900 de dolari, membrii pot interacționa cu dumneavoastră și pot afla prin intermediul cetului tehnici care să le asigure ascensiunea pe piața de afaceri, performanțe în zona de fitness sau cum să atingă succesul în plan personal, inclusiv cum să cucerească femeile. Presa a notat că prin intermediul celor două platforme v-ați sporit considerabil numărul adepților care par să acționeze ca o adevărată armată, propagându-vă mesajele pe rețele de socializare. Urmează întrebarea Cât de mare este armata lui Andrew Tate în online? That's a very good question. At one point, I was the most Googled man in the world, which was an uh, interesting experience. I teach positive things. I am not interested in drama. I'm not interested in just getting clicks. I genuinely try and teach good things to the world. And anybody who is a fan of mine, their life improves. In fact, the majority of fan mail I get is from females, usually mothers, encouraging me to continue along my mission because of how positive I've been an influence for their sons. I don't drink alcohol. I'm strictly religious. I've never taken a drug in my life. I'm a kickboxing world champion, a dedicated athlete. I have a lot of money, not because I'm from a rich family. I come from the absolute lowest echelon of socioeconomic housing, and I've done it all absolutely myself. And I teach these things, and I try and teach young men to be disciplined and stoic and work hard and explain to them that nothing good is going to come from life unless they dedicate themselves. And I teach this inside of my online school, and we have hundreds of thousands of students, and we teach them how to make money, but also improve their mental health. And Anybody who is a fan of mine, any young man who watches my content will feel better and act better. And I think that is a very visceral and a very real interaction with me as a brand. I, they don't watch me for entertainment purposes. They watch me because their life improves outside of the Internet in the real world. And that's why they're so dedicated to me and my message. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. V-ați născut pe 1 decembrie 1986 într-un spital din Washington, la un an de la căsătoria părinților. Tatăl dumneavoastră, afroamerican, a fost sergent în forțele aeriene ale SUA și a devenit jucător profesionist de șah. Iar mama, englezoaică, a lucrat în domeniul serviciilor de catering. Despre primii ani din viața dumneavoastră ați povestit așa. Nu am învățat să plâng pentru atenție. Foloseam doar mărâituri pentru a indica foamea sau disconfortul, dar în cea mai mare parte a timpului eram tăcut. În prezent, toată lumea vă remarcă debitul verbal, calitățile de orator și acest ton vehement pe care îl folosiți. Urmează întrebarea? Când ați devenit atât de vocal? It's another very good question. I think young men shouldn't talk so much. When I was young, I was focused on hard work. I was very focused on my kickboxing career and training very hard and listening to people. I think that one of the problems with the world today now, especially is with the internet, we have a bunch of young men speaking too much. So for a long time, especially in my 20s, I used my superhuman healing powers, which is what you have during that decade, to dedicate myself to nearly endless work and study. I was a very good student before I began to speak. And it was when my kickboxing career ended and also my father died. For some reason, I kind of felt like my time as the student was over and I could start to speak more about the things I'd learned. And also, I truly believe 
not so much in Romania because Romania's still got sanctity in regards to religious beliefs, but in the West especially, I don't, don't, don't think many Romanians truly understand how fallen the Western countries is, how satanic America and England are. And I truly believe that someone had to stand up and speak and God gave me a platform and I have the ability to affect young men with my voice. And I truly believe there's evil in the world and good men don't stand by when evil is taking place and someone needs to stand up and say the pertinently obvious things which can save the world. And I have this platform and I'm going to speak them. So it just kind of evolved along with my influence. Întrebarea a fost simplă. Când ați devenit atât de vocal? Five years ago. Mulțumesc. Mergem mai departe. Numele dumneavoastră complet este Emory Andrew Tate al treilea. Sunteți primul născut și duceți mai departe cu mândrie numele tatălui dumneavoastră, care era Emory Andrew Tate al doilea. Tatăl dumneavoastră a fost maestru internațional al șahului și se află în top șapte cei mai mari jucători afroamericani din istorie. I se spunea extraterestrul, pentru că modul său de a juca era considerat ca fiind de pe altă planetă. Ați spus despre el că a fost lingvist la CIA, vorbea cinci limbi străine și avea un IQ de invidiat. Vă citez. A deținut recordul CIA pentru cel mai scurt timp în care a învățat o limbă străină. A învățat rusă în două săptămâni și jumătate de la zero. Doar a citit dicționarul. Dumneavoastră nu vorbiți alte limbi în afară de engleză, iar în ceea ce privește șahul, deși tata v-a învățat să-l jucați de la o vârstă fragedă și ați fost campionul statului Indiana la vârstă de 5 ani, la categoria sub 16 ani, nu ați urmat o carieră în domeniu. Vreau să știu dacă sunteți de părere că genialitatea se moștenește. Urmează întrebarea... V-ați dezamăgit vreodată tatăl? That's a very good question. I don't believe I've let my father down. I believe my father's still watching me and you're correct. I do carry his name. My father was a warrior. He died at war at the chessboard. I believe I've been a warrior my entire life. I think my father was smarter than I am. I don't think I'll ever be as intelligent as he was. He had a very special type of intellect. However, I have some other qualities he doesn't have and The idea of having children in dynasty is to try and recreate better versions of yourself to give them all the good things about you and perhaps remove some of the bad and try and create this person into the perfect version of your last name. I was always instilled with a duty to my last name. I was told I had to perform as a Tate should perform. And that's why I cannot act with cowardice is why I must stand up and tell the truth of what I believe is happening in the world and tell the truth about the satanic agendas which I believe are happening in the West and tell the truth about the fact that DCA have ruined Romania's reputation in a selfish bid to try and get promotions inside of their organization and to sit and sell the truth. And, and I think that's my job and I think that's what Tates have always done. And I don't think he's ever been disappointed in me because I've never been a coward and I never will be a coward. And if they walk in this room now to assassinate me, I'm going to go with a smile on my face. That's just how I am. That's how I was raised and that's how Tates have always performed. Mulțumesc. Mergem mai departe. Cariera tatălui dumneavoastră în armata americană a luat sfârșit brusc. Vă citez. Tatăl meu a primit un diagnostic de tulburare de personalitate narcisistă și cred că el chiar avea această tulburare. Oamenii spun că am și eu această tulburare, dar eu nu o am. Atunci când sufer de așa ceva, crezi cu adevărat că ești aproape invincibil. Tata și-a dorit ca dumneavoastră să fiți de neînvins, așa că v-a dat o educație severă. V-a învățat încă de mic să vă bateți și v-a ajutat în stilul său să scăpați de toate fobiile. V-a lăsat să stați singur pe întuneric, deși erați doar un băiețel înfricoșat. V-a ras în cap pentru a vă demonstra că nu e important cum arăți și nu voia să vă vadă plângând în public. În ciuda durității cu care v-a tratat, nu cred că exagerez dacă spun că îl divinizați pe tatăl dumneavoastră. Urmează întrebarea? Cât de mult ați râvnit la iubirea tatălui? I had unlimited love for my father. My father adored me and I think a father and men in general we love from an authoritarian position. When a man loves a woman, He is going to make sure she's protected and safe. He's going to say, don't walk home at night. I will come and get you. He will be, to a degree, protective. And I think that, especially if you're older and you're wiser, I know that me, as a man now, I am trying to pass my knowledge on and trying to be strict on the people I love because I want the best for them. 
the same as you will tell your child they cannot eat candy all day long because you know better than they do. And my father was extremely strict on me because he loved me. He had unlimited love for me, and that's why he was so disciplinarian with me. And life as a man is very hard. He prepared me for a very difficult life. I'm not some rich kid. I was thrown in Romanian jail. It was not a problem for me. I've been through much worse than that. And I've been created, I've been created to be prepared for all eventualities of life. And I think that when you are a man, life is extremely difficult, harder than being a woman, exceptionally difficult. And if you're not prepared for that, you're always going to suffer. You're either going to suffer the pain that it takes to be important, or you're going to suffer being a nobody and being insignificant. And that's the unfortunate realities of life as a man. And my father did a fantastic job of preparing me for that. Continuo. Presa internațională a scris că tatăl dumneavoastră a avut probleme cu alcoolul și că de multe ori a riscat să piardă la cazinou toate câștigurile obținute la masa de șah. Dumneavoastră ați spus că din cauza problemelor financiare cu care se confrunta familia, în 1997, pe când aveați 11 ani, v-ați mutat cu mama și cu frații dumneavoastră în Luton, Anglia. Vă citez. Situația noastră devenise atât de grea încât am decis să plecăm în Anglia fără tata. Eu nu am avut niciodată o viață ușoară. Nu provin dintr-o familie bogată, mi-ați spus deja. Sunt de pe străzi efectiv și am crescut foarte greu. Au trecut de atunci 26 de ani, timp în care situația dumneavoastră financiară s-a schimbat. Astăzi, la cei 37 de ani ai dumneavoastră, aveți conturi bancare consistente, dar înghețate și mașini de lux încă puse sub sechestru. Vreau să știu dacă ați mai putea să o luați încă o dată de la zero. Urmează întrebarea. Ați mai putea trăi în sărăcie? Absolut. I have no problem living in poverty. I am who I am. I'm Amory Andrew Tate, and I'm happy with who I am because of my last name. And I'm happy that I live true under God, and I, and I do the right thing. I'm happy that I live with honor, and I'm not a snake, and I'm not a rat, and I don't tell on my friends, and I don't betray anybody. I, I've made a whole bunch of money because I believe in the world today, if you're a competent male who can get up on time, a firm handshake, does what he's supposed to do, stick to his promise, that it's very easy to become a millionaire. I teach that inside of my school. I teach people how to become exceptionally rich. I don't think it's difficult if you're actually a hardworking person. I've made money by result of just being competent, but money is not who I am. I was who I was before I had money, which is why I have money. I have no problem going back to poverty. I lived in poverty most of my life. If I end up 72 years old on a beach in the Philippines, as long as I have my brother, I'll be smiling. I mean, money is beneficial and beautiful, but truthfully, I spend most of my money helping other people. They don't talk about this on international media, but you can go to TatePledge.com. I, I donate $25 million a year feeding children. TatePledge.com. They don't talk about that. I spend my money on the mothers of my children, my mother, the women I care about, my sister. As a man, when you have a lot of money, you use it to provide and to help others. I find my happiness through the happiness of others. If I buy myself a new I feel less happiness than if I buy my girlfriend a new My money is for everybody else. So I'm the workhorse. All I do is work and give it away. That's what is the masculine imperative. Think of Christmas morning. Nobody buys dad anything. It's about the children and the women. This is how it is as life as a man. So I could go back to poverty, but if I went back to poverty, I would feel bad for the people around me who I love, who I love to give to, who I love to take care of. I love that all of my family fly on private jets and we grew up in a council estate where we had less than 200 euro a month to live. I wouldn't worry about myself. I always worry about everybody else. And it was exactly the same in jail. I used all of my phone calls to check on everybody else. I never was concerned for me. I was concerned for everybody I provide for. So, yeah, I can live in poverty, but I'd worry about my empire. Mulțumesc. Mergem cu prima întrebare roșie. Vă citez. La 11 ani eram capul familiei. Aveam grijă de fratele meu mai mic, de sora și de mama care ne-a crescut singură. Pentru a vă asigura traiul zilnic, după mutarea în Newton, mama dumneavoastră s-a angajat ca ajutor de bucătar la cantina unei școli. Ați continuat să păstrați legătura cu tata, însă el v-a spus întotdeauna că trebuie să meritați timpul petrecut în compania sa, astfel că întâlnirile cu el aveau loc doar de două ori pe an. Viața dumneavoastră nu era dificilă doar acasă, ci și la școală, unde dumneavoastră și Tristan erați tachinați și ironizați, nu doar pentru că locuiați într-una dintre cele mai sărace zone din oraș, ci și din cauza accentului american pe care îl aveți. Unul dintre colegii dumneavoastră din liceu a declarat așa, Andrew a fost șicanat și s-a râs mult pe seama lui. Urmează întrebarea roșie? 
când nu a mai îndrăznit nimeni să râdă de Andrew Tate? Very good question. And I don't know if I was laughed at. I mean, I certainly stuck out. I was different in school. It was always my brother and I as a team. We didn't fit in. We couldn't play soccer like the English kids could, and we had a different accent, and we were exceptionally poor. But nobody bullied us. Everybody always understood there was a degree of respect for us because they knew that we weren't cowards and they would have to fight us at some point, and they didn't want to push it that far. So I would say we weren't bullied, perhaps a little bit ostracized. Um, but I wouldn't say that was necessarily difficult to deal with. And to this day, I still think there's people out there in the world who laugh at me and people who hate me online and hide behind imaginary accounts and say silly things. But to my face, it's been a very long time since I've been disrespected. And I'm not going to say that just because I'm a tough guy. I'm not going to say that because I'm a big, strong kickboxer. I'm going to say that because I treat most people with respect. And I think if you go through life and treat people with respect, most of the time you get respect back. And it's, you have to re meet a very special kind of idiot who's going to disrespect you when you're a respectful person. So I don't have negative interactions with people. I try very hard to keep my life peaceful. And I think when you've known violence like I have, when you've known true violence and you've grown up in an area where there's multiple stabbings and your friends have died and I carry scars to this day from knife wounds, I think you try very hard to keep life peaceful. So in general, in my day-to-day -day interactions, things are very happy, very positive. If anybody has anything bad to say about me, it seems they want to say it far away from me, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Mulțumesc. În 2005, ați început antrenamentele de kickboxing, iar în 2007 l-ați înfruntat în primul noastră meci oficial pe luptătorul Scott Gibson și ați fost înfrânt prin knockout. V-ați auto-intitulat în ring Cobra sau King Cobra și până la retragerea din 2020 ați obținut patru titluri de campion la categoriile semi-grea și grea în competițiile organizate în stil full contact în cadrul Asociației Internaționale Sportive de Kickboxing. Despre succesul în ring, dar și în afara lui, ați spus așa. În mintea mea nu am slăbiciuni. Poate că e nebunesc, dar este brutal de folositor. Cum pot să spun că am o slăbiciune sau alta când eu am o rată de succes de 100%? De altfel ați mărturisit că Tatăl dumneavoastră a fost cel care v-a învățat încă din copilărie să nu renunțați niciodată, vă citez. Când eram mic, tata mă împingea mereu. Până la urmă am învățat să îi țin piept. Așa că el mă împingea și mai tare. L-am întrebat de ce mă împinge. Iar el mi-a spus că trebuie să învăț să mă ridic. Urmează întrebarea. De câte ori ați fost nevoit să vă ridicați de la podea? Very good question. There is no light without dark. I think the ancient Chinese nailed it when they put the yin and yang together. You have the black and the white and they flow into each other and there's a little bit of white in the black, there's a little bit of good in the evil and there's a little bit of evil in the good. And if life is perfect all the time, you don't appreciate anything. I actually think one of the worst lives you can have is a life where everything goes right all of the time. If you're spoiled to that degree, especially as a man, as soon as you reach any kind of difficulty, you're going to crumble. So I've had to get up a bunch of times. And I do not pray for an easy life. I pray for a difficult life with difficult challenges to solve and being strong enough to handle them. I've never tried to make my life easier. In fact, quite the opposite. And I think that life is going to continue along this way. Once I beat this current garbage, which is going on at the hands of DCOT, there will be some other garbage later on down the line. And if you really want an exceptional life and to do exceptional things, you can't only hope for the positive exceptional. When I'm on a private plane and they're flying on a private plane to another continent, and that's a very exceptional experience. So is a Romanian jail cell. That's an exceptional experience. It's difficult to call that a normal life. It's far from the norm. So if you want the highs, you have to accept the lows. And I want the highs. I want to make sure my human experience is as varied as possible. So I've had to get up thousands of times, and I'm sure I'll have to get up thousands of times more, but I know me as a person, and I know I'll never stay down. So I'm unafraid. Bine, mulțumesc. Ați intrat prima dată în ring ca luptător amator MMA în martie 2010, iar la finalul la trei runde ați fost declarat învingător în urma deciziei juriului. Aveați să înregistrați o nouă victorie trei luni mai târziu, de această dată la profesioniști în un meci în care organizatorii vă anunțaseră de la început că învingătorul va încasa toți banii, în vreme ce învinsul va rămâne doar cu loviturile încasate. Nu v-a speriat acest gând, ba chiar ați intrat în ring 
cu atât mai motivat. Vă citez. Când am intrat în ring să lupt, eram un kickboxer cu o centură neagră în judo și fără pic de experiență în MMA. Dar eram falit. Eram atât de sărac că nu îmi puteam plăti nici măcar chiria. Înțeleg că ați intrat în cușcă de nevoie, dar urmează întrebarea. Ați intrat vreodată în cușcă de plăcere? Nu. No. I don't think I ever fought out of pleasure. I fought because in my 20s I had a raging fire inside of me that I couldn't find a way to channel into anything other than professional fighting to make sure that I lived a peaceful, happy life within the confines of the law. I think the masculine essence has always been one for conquest. I think that's been bred out of men in the modern world and they're trying to do that on purpose so that they can subjugate society and enslave us all. But if a man is true to his masculine essence, he wants to have an empire of sorts. I think it's been that way throughout all of history. Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, doesn't matter who you name, they all wanted an empire. And I was in my 20s, I could heal quickly. I had no money, no influence. Back then was almost before the internet. There was no big social media following, no Instagram, nothing. I was just a young man full of fire and I decided the best thing I can do is to get in the cage and show that I'm braver than everybody else and destroy my enemies so that I can be paid and respected. I wouldn't say I did it for fun. I did it out of necessity. And I think that if more men had a genuine fire inside of them, society wouldn't be so broken. I think that anger and masculine essence in the correct direction when properly focused is extremely powerful. I think that when water goes wild, you have a flood, but when it's controlled through a dam, you can power an entire town. And we shouldn't be teaching men to remove their masculinity. They should keep it and put it in the correct direction. And this is how you conquer the world. And that's basically what I've done. Bine, mulțumesc. Mergem cu o întrebare roșie. În civilul dumneavoastră scrie că ați lucrat în televiziune și că ați fost producător executiv pentru o serie de filme printre care Endgame, Alone sau Capone's Boys. Presa v-a acordat însă mai multă atenție odată cu participarea la emisiunile TV Ultimate Traveler și Big Brother, unde v-ați făcut remarcat datorită strategiilor cu care sperați să câștigați marele premiu. Dacă probleme medicale v-au obligat să părăsiți show de supraviețuire, presa a speculat că eliminarea din casa Big Brother după numai șapte zile ar fi fost provocată de apariția unui video în care loveți o femeie cu o curea. Vreau să știu care a fost adevăratul motiv pentru care ați fost eliminat de la Big Brother. Urmează întrebarea? De ce loviți femeile? Hmm. I don't hit women. It's very interesting you asked me that question. I certainly don't hit a woman in anger. I never have. In fact, that video they're talking about, the woman herself came out and clarified it, and I think it's better that people listen to her than me because it's her point of view and we should respect her as an adult to say what she believes. I don't think that was the reason I was removed from Big Brother either. The reason I was removed from Big Brother was because I was having arguments with the other men inside the house and they thought it was going to get physical and a confrontation was about to happen and they wanted me to sign a waiver that in the event of a confrontation I won't hit anybody and I said well I'm not going to sign that if it's self-defense it's self-defense and they were concerned for the welfare of the other little weaklings with big mouths and they had to remove me but I'm a big man and I'm a professional fighter and if I hit a woman there wouldn't be any garbage case where I go to jail and there's no evidence and then I'm released. There would be medical evidence and pictures and videos and proof. The fact they're saying I hit this woman and this woman came out and said, no, he didn't hit me. It was a play game. I think that proves everything. So I don't need to hit women. I'm not a frustrated man. I also think that most of the world understands that when you find a man who beats woman, he's, he's called weak. He's called cowardly. Most of these men are frustrated. When I felt like fighting, I fought men. So. I'm not frustrated. My life's extremely successful and I have very good interactions with women overall. I have no problems in that department, so I don't hit women. Ați lovit pe cineva la Big Brother? No, I didn't. I had a big argument with a few of the other contestants and it was about to get physical and it looked like three of them were going to attack me and They took me into the producer's room and said, if this fight happens, we don't want you to hurt anyone. And there was a disagreement between me and the producers. And eventually they decided I had to leave the show. That's what happened. Mulțumesc. 
Presa a notat că anul 2014 nu a început deloc bine pentru dumneavoastră. Chiar din prima zi a anului, pe 1 ianuarie, poliția britanică va a locuința din Newton și a decis arestarea dumneavoastră pentru două zile în urma unei acuzații de agresiune domestică. Jurnaliștii au scris că în timp ce oamenii legii investigau acuzațiile, dumneavoastră părăseați Marea Britanie pentru România. Urmează întrebarea... E prea restrictivă Anglia pentru Andrew Tate? No, I have absolutely zero problems in England. In 2014, I was accused by a girl of hitting her. The police came to question me. The police then looked through her phone and saw conversations of her planning to get me in trouble with her friend, discussing with her friend what lies she would tell, and they instantly dropped the case. I then moved to Romania. I found Romania to be a beautiful country. And for a long time, I laughed with my brother how crazy it is that a girl planned to lie to the police and wrote about it to her friend and the police discovered the text messages. So the entire case was thrown away. Then it was very funny. A very corrupt decot prosecutor who was desperate to put me in jail for no reason besides his own career has come along, locked my brother and, uh, and I up saying that we've done bad things we haven't done. And that girl has also written to her friend and admitted how she will lie to the police and talked about how she will get an Oscar in text messages to her friend. Those text messages are also in the file, proving that her and her friend are lying from the absolute beginning. But for some reason, unlike the British state, which instantly released me because they understood it was falsified, the Romanian state decided to put me in jail for three months and keep me on house arrest for five months. I can't answer why that is. But I am completely free to move inside of the UK. I don't have a criminal record. I've never been convicted of anything. I've never been found guilty of any crime. I'm 37 years old and I have a clean conscience and a clear record. And in 2014, it was a very short-lived incident because the British authorities threw it away instantly. And now I'm waiting for the Romanian authorities to do the correct thing. It's funny how history repeats. Very interesting how history repeats. And I'm sure in the end, the judges will do the right thing. It's just a matter of waiting for that to happen. Bine. O să vă întreb altfel. În opinia dumneavoastră, ați ridicat vreodată mâna la o femeie? Tried. That's a good question. I don't often miss. I'm a professional fighter. I'm pretty good. If I tried, I would have succeeded. And uh, I don't need to hit women. There's no reason why. Mulțumesc. Mergem mai departe. Vă citez. Națiunile mele gazdă, națiunile mele de origine, America și Anglia, m-au abandonat. Cred că din cauza opiniilor mele politice și pentru că sunt anti-LGBT, împotriva războiului din Ucraina, împotriva vaccinului COVID. Chiar dacă ați fost foarte vocal împotriva multor lucruri, în 2022 v-ați arătat susținerea pentru Donald Trump, chiar dacă asta a însemnat să adânciți ruptura cu sora dumneavoastră, despre care ați spus că ia parte la mitinguri feministe și îl consideră rasist pe fostul președinte american. Nu numai că v-ați simțit abandonat, însă ați adus deseori în discuție teorii ale conspirației și ați susținut că Matrix și-a trimis agenții. Pentru că tot vă place Matrix, o să îl citesc pe Neo, personajul principal din film. Nu-mi place gândul că nu dețin controlul asupra propriei mele vieți. Urmează întrebarea. Ați pierdut vreodată controlul? That's a good question. I don't think we have complete control over our lives. Obviously, there's outside influences would affect it. I think one of the only things in life you truly have control over is your state of mind. You can't even control if your heart keeps beating. It can stop any time it wants. You can't control the weather. You can't control if the police bust your door down. You can't control if the Matrix decides to coordinate all of the media in the world to say you're something you're not. You don't have control over much, but you do have control over your state of mind and how you react to things. And I see God in all things. I see God in all outcomes and all situations. And I believe that he is the best of planners and he is giving us tests for us to learn and grow. And I never allow my state of mind to betray me. I've never lost control of my head. I've never felt depressed. I've never felt sad. I've never felt sorry for myself. I've never been able to get rid of a thought I didn't want to get rid of. And I think that we live inside of our own minds. And as long as you control your mind, you get to control your reality. So I don't think I've ever lost control. And I don't think I ever will lose control. No matter what happens to me, I'll always control my mind and control how I view it. And I view all things as a positive, no matter how negative they seem. I see the positive in everything and I see the lesson in everything and I see God in everything. So for that reason, 
I will confidently state I've never lost control because all that we have is our state of mind and I own mine. Mergem cu întrebare roșie. Într-un videoclip în care ați explicat motivele mutării în România, ați spus așa. Îmi place ideea de a putea să fac ce vreau. Îmi place să fiu liber. Îmi place să trăiesc într-o societate în care banii, influența și puterea mea înseamnă că nu sunt supus sau reținut de vreo lege. Ați mai declarat că preferați să trăiți într-o țară în care corupția este la îndemâna tuturor și unde oricine poate să plătească 50 de dolari mită ca să scape de o amendă pentru viteză excesivă. Nu e de mirare că ați ales România, care în 2022 continua să fie percepută ca unul dintre cele mai corupte state din Uniunea Europeană, ocupând un rușinos loc 3. Și totuși, acest sistem perceput ca unul profund corupt este sistemul care v-a băgat pe dumneavoastră în închisoare pentru 92 de zile. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Câtă mită ați dat în România? <laughs> That's a very good question. Firstly, let me clarify. That statement was made during a longer format piece. I was talking about corruption of nations around the world. And I was actually saying that I believe America is the most corrupt country in the world. And anyone who understands geopolitics and especially global wars will understand exactly how corrupt America is. And I was also explaining this to an American lawyer who said to me, well, you live in Romania and Romania is corrupt. And I said, well, yeah, Romania is corrupt. You can pay $50 to get out of a speeding ticket, but they're not going to invade Afghanistan and send their young men to die for basically no reason. And I was trying to highlight the differences in the, sl the low level petty corruption against the global corruption, which is instigated on the planet by a country like the USA. So I actually have a lot of respect for Romania and the fact that you can buy your way out of a speeding ticket isn't a big deal compared to the things that most countries are doing with their corruption. That's the first thing. The second thing is I have nothing to pay bribes for. I, I'm not involved in politics in this country. I don't know the names of the different political parties. I don't know the names of any politicians. I tried to stay very far away from politics because I understand I have a massive amount of influence and the last thing I want, want to do is get involved in a game I don't fully understand. So I have no one to bribe. Who could I bribe? I don't have powerful friends in Romania. If I did, I guess I wouldn't have gone to jail. I tried to just live within the law and be a good person and keep myself to myself and make money and promote Romania and spend money here and help people. And I thought, and for seven years, I thought that would allow me to live a life of peace. And it turns out that that didn't work. Perhaps maybe I should have bribed people. Perhaps maybe I did need powerful friends. Perhaps maybe I should have been giving money away. I don't know. But I moved here and just lived with a pure heart and thought I don't do anything wrong. And then it turns out that I end up being attacked. And when I went to jail, every policeman, every guard, every single person I meet inside of the system, everyone I meet on the street, all of them said to me, it's because you got too rich and too famous, Andrew. That's why they did this to you. Everyone knows you're innocent. So I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should have had powerful friends. I'm not sure. I'll give you time. But I certainly didn't have them or I wouldn't have been in a jail cell. And I don't have anyone to pay bribes to. So. I think the idea that I'm somehow coming here with a whole sum of money to live this renegade life. What is my renegade life? Like I said earlier, I don't drink alcohol. I don't do drugs. My entire house has been searched three times. I haven't found anything. What am I doing with my renegade life? Going, going to the mosque and looking after my children? I don't think this is true at I'll all. I'll give you time. I have... I want to ask you. Have you ever given a mita in Romania? No. I have no one to bribe. I don't have friends that powerful, unfortunately. And uh, I don't think I needed to bribe anyone for anything. I don't break the law. I have no one to bribe anything for. I'm not involved in politics. I'm not doing anything that interesting. And my life has been forensically Did analyzed. You know I won't answer that question because the answer, I mean, there was a parking attendant once and I wanted a parking space, but I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. I'm not that much to miss. Continuum. Presa internațională notează că în anul 2011 ați lansat împreună cu fratele dumneavoastră, Tristan Tate, o companie de video chat în Anglia și ați angajat 75 de femei în patru locații diferite. Jurnaliștii au speculat că ați fi avut un studio de webcam și în Los Angeles. Întrebat recent despre activitatea dumneavoastră în domeniul video chatului, ați afirmat că ați renunțat la această afacere în urmă cu 6-7 ani, chiar dacă la momentul respectiv era foarte profitabilă nu doar 
pentru dumneavoastră, ci și pentru femeile care lucrau pentru dumneavoastră. Vă citez. Nu cred că dacă eu nu exploatam, oamenii aceia nu ar fi fost oricum exploatați. Am transformat mai multe femei în milionare decât bărbați. Urmează întrebarea. Câți bani ați câștigat din videochat? Good question. Like you correctly stated, I haven't touched anything to do with this for six or seven years. I can't remember exactly how much I made, but it was a profitable enterprise, which I decided to give up for personal reasons, and I've moved on to other things. I find it interesting that, especially Romanian media, try and use this to demonize me as if it's somehow a big relevation. I mean, you can drive down Uniri now and see signs for <laughs> There's <laughs> cars wrapped, parked all over the city. I think video chat is a very big and profitable business inside of Romania, and I don't hold anything against any woman who decides she wants to work within the industry. It's up to her. It's certainly not human trafficking. It's certainly not illegal. It's massive as an industry. Me and my brother were fairly successful. Uh, we were more, much more successful with other things. But if you ask any businessman how he became rich, he often had many tried and failed businesses or many businesses he did for short periods of time. I've run over 20 companies in my life. It was something we tried and made a little bit of money with. And nobody would even talk about or care about if it wasn't for this clown show investigation by DCOT trying to pretend that we're human traffickers when we clearly aren't. So um, we made some money. But What does it mean, some money? It'd be hard for me to estimate. I. I a couple hundred thousand dollars. We didn't, we certainly weren't that large with inside of it. The women made more money than us and we had to pay for the accommodation and those kind of things. And back then, seven, eight years ago, video chat wasn't nearly as big as it is today. It was a very small enterprise overall. And the reason it's still mentioned is because of this falsified case against me. Bine, am notat. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. Tristan Tate, fratele dumneavoastră, a recunoscut în fața jurnaliștilor britanici în 2022 că afacerea din domeniul videochatului s-a bazat și pe manipularea și păcălirea bărbaților. Astfel, după ce își arătau formele senzuale în fața camerelor, modelele dumneavoastră erau învățate să stoarcă și mai mulți bani de la clienții lor, pe care îi impresionau cu povești inventate despre urgențe medicale sau diverse probleme de familie. Domnule Tate. Remarc că dumneavoastră ați câștigat bani păcălind bărbați, iar acum educați bărbații contra unor sume cuprinse între 49,99 și 7,900 dolari. Urmează întrebarea. Sunt mai ușor de păcălit bărbații sau femeile? That's a very good question. I think that... Women fall for what they hear and men fall for what they see. And that's why women wear makeup and men tell lies. So it depends who you're trying to fool and why. But certainly women are easier to fool in some regards, depending on the tools at your disposal. And I can say the same for men. I wouldn't say one is easier than the other. I think that men and women are quite different. We have a different type of intelligence. But women certainly have an intellect. Women can be psychic sometimes. Women can just say, I know you were cheating, and she can have no proof at all, and she just knows. Women can have a certain type of intellect that I don't think men have. So overall, I'd say men are easier to fool. In regards to the original statement before the question, you were talking about the fact that the video chat models lie and sell a fantasy to men. That's true. That's not true for my models. That's true for the entire industry. And the man knows she's lying, and that's part of the fun. That's part of the game that people play. Uh, so I think the man wants to be fooled, because if she doesn't fool him or pretend to fool him, he's not interested. So it's part of the, the play. But. Overall, because I want to be a professional and give a compendious, concise answer, who's easier to fool, men or women? It's very difficult. It's hard to say. Și instrumentele de lucru pentru bărbați și pentru femei. Well, when you want to fool a man, I think you would have to appeal to his ego. I think if you appeal to a man's ego or his sense of duty, it's easier to fool him. And for a woman, if you want to fool her, I guess you would try and appeal to her sense of self and make her feel special and unique amongst many, which I guess is kind of the same thing. But um, overall, I think throughout society, I think men are more fooled than women. I think men fall for traps and, and tricks more often than women do. I think that there are far more men who have been destroyed by a woman than a woman who's been destroyed by a man. So I think men are the most fooled, so perhaps they're the easiest to fool. Okay, mulțumesc. Mergem cu întrebare roșie. Dacă aleg o femeie să fie soția mea, mă va iubi suficient să mă lase să-i spun cum am eu chef.
Eu voi decide dacă este sclavă. Trebuie să accepte că este a mea pentru totdeauna, indiferent ce fac. Această declarație va aparține și oricât ar fi de șocantă pentru unii, nu este deloc surprinzătoare, ținând cont că vine din partea dumneavoastră un influencer care, în repetate rânduri, a afirmat în mediul online că femeile sunt proprietatea bărbatului. Presa scrie că ați mers chiar mai departe. Femeile din studiurile noastre de videocet erau tatuate pe braț cu mesajul Owned by Tate, care în traducere înseamnă Aparțin lui Tate. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Câte femei aveți în proprietate? Well, to, there's a lot of things I want to clarify in that statement. The first thing is that I was explaining a lot of women today want to get married because they want to have a wedding and they want to show off on Instagram and they want to wear a dress and they want to spend money. They don't want to be a wife and to be a wife is something else. You have to dedicate yourself to your man and give yourself to the man. Hence why the father walks you down the aisle and gives you away and you take his last name. So to clarify the initial statement, I was saying the woman does belong to a man. If she becomes a wife, she should be looking to belong to him. That's the first thing. The second thing, there is a girl who has 50 tattoos who also got a tattoo with my name. That's true, but she has a bunch of tattoos. I don't think it's that significant. And there's a whole bunch of women I know, thousands of them who don't have a Tate tattoo. So I don't own anyone. I think that we're all grown-ups, and I think it'd be very misogynistic to assume that women can't make their own decisions, and if a woman decides she wants to associate with me, and I decide I want to associate with her, then we're consulting, consenting adults, and we will do that. If she decides she doesn't want to, or I decide I don't want to, then the relationship will end. I don't own any women, because um, I'm not married. But if I got married, I would see my wife as mine, absolutely. I would have no interest in a marriage without that degree of ownership. Why would I want to marry a woman and say she's not mine? She would be mine, absolutely and utterly, which comes with good and bad. There's bad, there's bad. I have a lot of responsibility. I have to pay her bills and protect her and take care of her and make sure that she has no problems. And she's driving a nice fast car and living in a mansion. So absolutely there'd be some bad from it, but there's also some good. You are my woman. You can't go and party with all those men and drink alcohol. No, stay here with me. If that makes me a misogynist, like the BBC wants to say, then heaven forbid I'm a misogynist. But I think that's what every rational male and female believes. So I'm going to say it regardless of how they demonize me in the media. Mulțumesc. Continuăm cu o întrebare roșie. Dacă după mutarea în Anglia, accentul american v-a creat probleme în colectivitate, în 2014, după mutarea în România, accentul britanic și experiența sportivă v-au ajutat să deveniți unul dintre cei mai apreciați comentatori ai galelor Romanian Extreme Fighting, organizate de omul de afaceri Sebastian Vieru. Presa a notat că asocierea cu omul de afaceri brașovean va a facilitat și drumul către primele tranzacții imobiliare în Săcele. Jurnaliștii au speculat că banii pe care dumneavoastră ați investit de-a lungul timpului în afacerile imobiliare ar fi provenit din exploatarea femeilor pe internet și subliniază că în prezent sunteți cercetat și într-un dosar de spălare de bani. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Ați spălat bani prin afaceri imobiliare? It's so interesting. That I'm accused of money laundry, but from my understanding of money laundry, you had to have committed a crime first, and then you're trying to turn the money legal. What crime have I committed? Where's the victim? What girl? Where is she? This has been two years now. Two years long, this investigation's gone on, and I'm sure Romania has better things to spend its money on. I'm sure we need hospitals and roads and pensions. But for two years, they've tried to find a victim, putting me all over the news, calling 2,000 people who know me, calling in people who I've not seen for five or six years, decaught, dragging them into the office and trying to convince them to say they're a victim when they're not, intimidating people, threatening people with jail if they don't turn on me, all to find a victim so they can say, I have laundered money. And two years later, they don't have a single one. It's ridiculous. I haven't laundered any money. If you earn money and you buy something, that's not money laundry. You have to commit a crime for the money in the first place, which I, of course, have not done. So, no, I've not laundered any money in any regard because I don't break the law. I don't need to break the law. I have no financial incentive to break the law. Why would I, at 35 years age, of age, according to this DECO file, who, with millions of dollars, world famous, a perfect life, children, big house, fast cars, why would I decide to then become a criminal? What's my motivation? It can't be money. I'm already rich. So what am I doing it for? Am I crazy? Am I insane? Have I lost my mind? And I want to run around and just be a criminal now? 
and then I'm going to find invisible victims, ghosts, and I'm going to take these ghosts and launder money through the ghosts. This is the fantasy of a prosecutor trying to catch a big fish. It's all garbage. And if the media is saying that I've done these things, well, with all due respect, since COVID, I don't have that much respect for the media anyway. The media told you to get seven vaccines or you're all going to die. So if you still sit there and believe what the media says, you have something wrong with your brain. I give you time. Deci, în opinia dumneavoastră, sunteți doar o victimă. I'm a victim. It's kind of interesting. Human trafficking is when you take somebody and you put them in a place and you isolate them and you don't let them leave for your own financial gain. And if a prosecutor is trying to get a promotion off the back of putting me in jail because I'm famous, it seems like I've been human trafficked. They've taken me and they've locked me in a room so they can make money. I feel like I'm a victim of human trafficking. Yes, I am a victim. I've been human trafficked. The only human trafficking in my entire case was me spending 92 days in jail for no reason. Bine, mergem mai departe. În aprilie 2022, anchetatorii au descins în locuința noastră din Pipera, având informații că acolo ar fi fost sequestrate și obligate să facă videocet mai multe tinere. Presa a scris că, în realitate, persoana căutată ar fi fost Emma, o americană abordată pe o rețea de socializare de fratele dumneavoastră și convinsă de acesta să își părăsească iubitul și să vină în România. Odată ajuns aici, fata așa a anunțat fostul partener că este victima unei înșelătorii și a cerut ajutor. Jurnaliștii au subliniat că, deși în locuința dumneavoastră au fost găsite mai multe tinere, dacă nu ar fi fost implicat un cetățean american, nu ați fi ajuns în vizorul autorităților. Așadar, dacă informațiile apărute în presă sunt adevărate, această situație a fost declanșată de fratele dumneavoastră. Vreau să știu dacă americanca Emma a fost cea mai mare greșeală a fraților Tate. Urmează întrebarea? De câte ori ați pierdut pe mâna fratelui dumneavoastră? That's a very good question. Firstly, I see God in all things and I don't see Emma as a mistake. Just to clarify for everybody at home, Emma was in Romania for six days. She visited my brother. He, they met in Miami. Her boyfriend on Instagram caught her at Tristan's house. So she then said to her boyfriend, I don't want to be here. I wish I could leave. Her boyfriend called the police, which notified the American embassy, which sent Decot into our house. Decot came into our house and found nobody else there. Emma has been going to and from the house, leaving on CCTV, which has been played on antenna. Everyone's seen it. She came and go. She was only in Romania for six days. There's conversations with Emma talking to her friend, saying how she's going to lie to the police, and she will get an Oscar for her lying performance, saying that she was trapped. We have video of her coming and going. All of this was provided to Decaught. Decaught let us go after two hours. We were witnesses in the beginning of April. They know she's lying. They have proof she's lying. They have video she's lying. They have conversations she's lying. They still then decided to spend nine months surveying us and wasting their time to come and arrest us again because we're famous and rich and they want to get a big case and put us back in jail. It was all garbage, but I don't see it as a loss because I see God in all things. And it doesn't matter if I had to suffer a little bit to expose the ridiculousness of certain judicial bodies and certain prosecutors. It doesn't matter if I had to go through these things because all in all, I think that God gives tests and trials for us to grow. I certainly learned some things about myself. I certainly learned some things about the difficulty of life in jail. I learned how important I am to the people who need me. And I see it as a blessing. So I don't think I've ever lost that count with my brother. I have the best brother on the planet. I love him with all of my heart. We are a team. We are united. It doesn't matter what he does. I will always have his back no matter what till the end. If you kill one of us, you have to kill both of us. I absolutely adore my brother. There's no brotherhood that's stronger than ours. And we've never lost because we are together. And as long as we are together, we will never lose. And in the end, at the end of this clown show, at the end of this circus, the end winners will emerge the Tate brothers because we've never done anything wrong. We live true under God. Mulțumesc. Mergem cu întrebare roșie. În anul 2022, conturile noastre de Facebook, Instagram și TikTok au fost suspendate, reprezentanții platformelor explicând că nu încurajează mesajele care, citez, laudă, promovează, glorifică sau susțin orice ideologie care incită la ură. Ați rămas însă activ pe Twitter, iar presa a speculat că acest lucru s-ar datora prieteniei cu Elon Musk, 
proprietarul platformei, denumite în prezent X. Mai mult, după ce rețeaua de socializare a anunțat că ia în calcul eliminarea conturilor inactive, l-ați rugat public pe miliardarul american să nu dezactiveze contul tatălui dumneavoastră decedat în 2015. Însă, imediat după arestarea dumneavoastră, în decembrie 2022, întrebat despre relația dumneavoastră, Elon Musk a spus așa, din câte știu eu, nu l-am întâlnit niciodată pe Andrew Tate. Vreau să știu ce alte celebrități s-au dezis de dumneavoastră. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Sunteți persoana non grata? Firstly, at the highest echelons of society, people are very careful about talking about their personal friendships. It's very easy for us to say, I've never met anyone, or I don't personally know someone, or I don't recall, and that's just professionalism at a certain level. That's the first part of the, my answer. The second part of my answer, I have been canceled by the matrix. I was deleted because they said I was misogynistic because I believe that men and women have different roles in society. I do not buy into the Satanism which is promoted in the West that women can be men and men can be women and men can get pregnant and women are as strong as men are and all this absolute insanity deliberately designed to degenerate society and create a society of slaves, which is what they're trying to do. They're trying to break down the family unit so that men no longer have any instinct to defend anything and then they can enslave us all like they did with COVID. They accused me of being misogynist for pointing out the pertinently obvious, and I'm not misogynistic in any regard, and then they deleted me, and they deleted me, quite rightly, from Facebook, Instagram, Gmail, my account, my account, six bank accounts, everything was deleted instantly, and in, synchron in uh, synchronicity. Everything was done at once. So when I talk about the matrix, this is a perfect example of it. If you upset them, if enough people listen to you and you say things they don't want you to say, all of a sudden they will press a button and every single app on your phone will stop working. And the idea is that you disappear and you go away. You have three lives out here in the world and your ability to tell the truth is heavily linked to your insignificance. You're allowed to speak the truth as long as no one listens to you, but when you have a huge platform, they expect you to shut up. You have to say, wear the mask, take the vaccine, be quiet. Because if you start talking about the truth, you're gonna get, get, gonna get in a lot of trouble like I did, and you have three lives. First, they cancel you and delete you off the internet, hoping you'll be quiet and go away. If that doesn't happen, they try and put you in jail for no reason on a falsified garbage case. And if that doesn't happen, they kill you. You have three lives if you talk against the establishment. And I've used two of mine. I give you time. I've used two of mine, and that's a very scary position to be in. Ce personalități au dezis de dumneavoastră? I don't think anybody's given up on. I don't think anybody's given up on me. I've never had any private conversations with anybody who's given up on me. There's just certain people with certain arrangements, especially sponsorships or large sums of money or affiliations with certain news networks, which have to be careful what they say, and I respect their professionalism. It's difficult at the highest echelons of society to just be open about your personal relationships. Okay. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. Ați mărturisit că după ce au fost închise conturile de pe rețele de socializare, ați avut o presimțire sumbră în legătură cu viitorul dumneavoastră și i-ați împărtășit gândurile lui Tristan, alături de care erați în acele momente în Dubai. La două săptămâni după întoarcerea în țară, presimțirea dumneavoastră s-a adeverit și ați ajuns după gratii. Vreau să știu dacă presimțirea dumneavoastră a avut legătură cu o posibilă informație pe care ați primit-o din structura de ICOT. Urmează întrebarea... Ați fost avertizat din interiorul de ICOT? I didn't have any information from inside DCOT. I have information from my life experience and I understand how the world works and I understand that ups and downs are linked like we discussed earlier and light and dark are together. And I said to Tristan that they've tried to cancel us because they don't like that we are telling the truth to the world. If we were lying, they would allow us to lie. When you rip out a man's tongue, you're not proving him a liar. You just prove you're afraid of him telling the truth. They deleted us across all of social media and this failed to damage our influence. In fact, we became more famous than ever before. You get three lives. The second life is they try and put you in jail on a garbage case with absolutely no evidence. And I felt it coming because I know how the world works. And I said to Tristan, I think they're going to try and do it. I think they're going to try and put us in jail for nothing. And he said, well, how could they do that? And I said, I don't know exactly. And then here we are two weeks later, a girl who texts her friend and said, I'm going to get an Oscar for lying watch how I lie to the police, 
and has CCTV, which has been all over the Romanian news of her coming and going from the house, holding her phone, who was in the country for six days, managed to somehow get my brother and I locked up. And I think that's because the prosecutors are extremely interested in putting us in jail, not because they care about the truth, but because someone has motivated them. It's unfortunate. This is how the world works. And you cannot shine bright in the world without casting a shadow. And I certainly shine bright and I understand how the world functions. And my second life is now up and I have to try my very best to not get assassinated. And that's my concern for probably the rest of my life because I don't want to be quiet. I want to continue to tell the truth because I believe that's why God put me on the earth. Cine este în opinia dumneavoastră acea persoană care i-a motivat pe procurorii DICOT? That would be a very quick way for me to use up my third life. So for now I'm I'm not going to answer that question. Ok, mergem mai departe. Pe 27 decembrie 2022, ați tachinat-o pe activista de mediu Greta Thunberg cu următorul mesaj. Bună ziua! Am 33 de mașini. Vă rog să-mi dați adresa dumneavoastră de e-mail ca să vă pot trimite o listă completă a colecțiilor mele de mașini și a emisiilor uriașe ale acestora. Două zile mai târziu, pe 29 decembrie, o anunțați pe activista suedeză că nu veți recicla cutia de pizza care tocmai vă fusese livrată. Fotografia cu dumneavoastră și cutia care purta logo-ul unei celebre pizzerii din România a fost văzută însă și de autoritățile de la București, care, având astfel certitudinea că sunteți pe teritoriul țării noastre, au descins în locuința dumneavoastră. În urma raziei făcute, ați fost reținut în cadrul unei anchete privind comiterea infracțiunilor de trafic de persoane și viol. La câteva ore după arestarea dumneavoastră, Greta Thunberg a scris ironic Asta se întâmplă când nu reciclezi cutia de pizza. Vreau să știu dacă ați învățat să reciclați cutiile de pizza. Urmează întrebarea? De câte ori v-ați dat de gol? I don't think I gave myself away. I'm sure the Romanian authorities are competent enough to know where I lived. I'm very sure they know where I lived. In fact, because I was under surveillance for months for no reason. So they knew where I lived. So I don't think I gave myself away. My house is not a secret. Um, Greta and I have had our conversations. We've gone back and forth because I believe she is New World Order, WEF. I believe she is part of the global agenda to enslave us all. Call me crazy conspiracy theorist, but that's what I believe. I believe that climate change will be the new excuse to lock us all in our houses and prevent us from going outside to save the earth. And they're just building up to it and people like Greta are important tools in their arsenal. So her and I have had our conversations But I don't think she had much to do with my arrest besides being part of the, the matrix and the mechanism which is unhappy with my existence. I don't think she directly ordered it. I think she is a pawn in the game. I don't think she is any kind of orchestrator in the game. So I didn't give myself away. Romanians, the Romanian authorities are competent enough to know where I lived and uh, they'd been there before and they turned up again for coffee that morning. So uh, that's what happened. Bine. Continuăm. Ați spus despre dumneavoastră că sunteți cel mai puternic om, că sunteți invincibil și că nu aveți nicio slăbiciune. Cu toate acestea, pe 30 decembrie 2022 ați ajuns în spatele gratilor și v-ați petrecut următoarele 92 de zile într-o celulă mică, după ce măsura arestului preventiv a fost prelungită de două ori. Ați mărturisit că nu ați înțeles capetele de acuzare și ați resimțit situația ca pe o adevărată tortură. Vă citez. Mă simt torturat. Sunt aruncat într-o celulă fără lumină. Gândacii și păduchii îmi sunt singurii prieteni seara. Autoritățile încearcă să-mi distrugă mentalitatea de fier prin nedreptăți. Mai mult. Ați afirmat că după ce ați fost eliberat din închisoare, ați început să aveți coșmaruri, lucru pe care nu l-ați experimentat înainte. Aș vrea să-mi spuneți dacă v-ați recapătat mentalitatea de fier. Urmează întrebarea? Ce ați simțit în închisoare? Furie sau frică? Yeah, it's a good question. I never lost my iron framework. 
I did have nightmares because obviously you're in a jail cell and things are uncomfortable, but I don't believe in things that take away power from me. I believe the nightmares were a message from God to strengthen me. I see God in all things. I never see myself as weak. When I talk about being invincible, I don't talk about it in the literal sense. I'm sure with enough bullets, I would die. Probably not one, maybe 10. They'd get me in the end. But I believe that I stand the best chance of survival by believing I can resist a bullet as opposed to believing it will hurt me. So I always believe in those things in my mind. That's where my invincibility comes from. When I was in jail, I was extremely concerned for everybody outside of jail. As said, I had no idea why I was put in jail. I don't speak Romanian. The papers were in Romanian. It was New Year's Eve. It took a while to get translations. There was delays. People were saying human trafficking, which is insane because the two girls in the file are screaming on the news that they're not victims. So the whole thing was a joke. Everyone was laughing about how ridiculous it was. So I, nobody was clear. It took a while for me to understand how pathetic the whole thing was. But I was very concerned for my children. I was very concerned for my mother. I was very concerned for my staff and their families. And I wasn't concerned for myself. I was genuinely very concerned for everybody I have to provide and protect and care for. And most of my conversations with my brother in that jail cell were how can we make sure everybody else is eating? How can we make sure everybody else is okay? Most of my time on the phone was spent reassuring other people's state of mind, making sure other people felt okay. It was never about me. Me going to jail was actually about everybody else. What do you say to the children of your They're quite young, so I didn't have to explain it to them exactly where I was. They just knew that I was away. But it was uncertain how long I was going to be in there. And obviously, you have to make a contingency and plan for the worst. But luckily, a Romanian judge saw the light and let me out. I give you time. Could you now? The, they're three. And luckily, and to be fair, the Romanian judicial system, the judges have been very good to me. The judges can see garbage when, they, when it's put in front of them. And the judges let me free. And I got to reunite with, my, with some of my children. Some of my children I've still not seen because I can't leave Romania. And their mothers are scared to come here because they see the police state as brutal and they see it as corrupt. So they won't come here. So there's a daughter, which I haven't seen since the beginning of this, because the mother is I afraid. Give you time. The mother is afraid of decop and I can't leave. So I've been separated from one of my daughters for over a year because of this entire saga. And that's the thing that's so upsetting. Like there's real people involved in this, real emotions involved in this game. When people sit and go, oh, I want a promotion, I want to put a famous man in jail. They don't understand that there's full-grown women crying, there's children crying, missing their father. It's truly sad what's happening. Mulțumesc. Mergem mai departe, mergem cu o întrebare roșie. În ciuda faptului că ați spus că a fost foarte frustrant să fiți închis într-o cutie și să ai parte de o libertate de acțiune extrem de limitată, pe parcursul zilor de detenție nu ați uitat de aspectul fizic, așa că dumneavoastră și fratele ați solicitat prezența unui frizer care să vă aranjeze părul și barba. Mai mult, presa a notat că ați fi avut și niște cerințe neobișnuite pentru un om aflat după gratii, cum ar fi o masioză, sau o consolă de jocuri. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Cât de arogan sunteți? Hmm. I don't think I'm arrogant at all. I like to think I treat all people with respect and anyone who respects me will be treated nicely. I don't often get called arrogant in person. I don't see myself as delusional in any regard. I know what I'm good at and I'll say what I'm good at. Any delusions I have are deliberately manufactured for my own state of mind, like believing a bullet wouldn't kill me. I think that's the best thought you can have in your head when you're shot. But I understand it's something I've manufactured. I don't think I'm arrogant at all. In fact, I was the nicest person in jail. Please feel free to go do an investigative journalism around central arrest. I said please and thank you to every single prison guard who put handcuffs on me and marched me out to court even though I shouldn't have been there. I said please and thank you for every single meal I was given. I said please and thank you to the nurse who was concerned for me because my blood pressure was so high. I said please and thank you to absolutely everybody. I'm very respectful to people who are just doing their jobs. I know it's not their fault I'm in jail. I was Mr. Smiley. I was brightening up everybody's day. I was the opposite of arrogant. There were people inside of the jail screaming, banging on the door saying let me go home. To me that's, that's arrogance to believe that you even stand a chance of that happening. I understood that there's people here doing honest work and I'm in a jail cell I don't belong in, and that God will fix out all, and time solves all things. And I was very nice to everybody. I would actually 
had been told many times I was the nicest prisoner they ever had. The old ladies who brought the meal around, they got the most compliments they probably ever had. Everyone else didn't want to eat it. I was telling her how amazing it was. Did you cook this? This is amazing. It's better than my grandma. This is the best. I was very nice to people because I believe if you make people happy, they'll make you happy back. If you want to feel happy inside yourself, the best thing you can do is make others smile. That's how I am as a man. That's how I've always, always been, like I described earlier about buying somebody else a car. So I spent most of my time in jail making sure everybody around me was smiling so that I could smile. And it was fine. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. Presa spune că ați moștenit duritatea de la tatăl și de la bunicul dumneavoastră, spre deosebire de Tristan, care nu doar că nu a făcut performanță în ring, acolo unde dumneavoastră ați fost campion, dar pare să fi devenit mai degrabă umbra dumneavoastră, sau chiar citez, cățărușul lui Andrew Tate. Jurnaliștii au remarcat diferențe majore între frații Tate și în timpul perchezițiilor din 2022. Atunci, despre dumneavoastră s-a spus că ați fi avut un aer arogant, pe când Tristan părea mai degrabă panicat. Și dumneavoastră ați povestit că în timpul detenției ați avut un comportament total diferit. În timp ce dumneavoastră ați preferat să înfruntați realitatea, fratele dumneavoastră s-a închis tot mai mult în el. Vreau să știu care este cea mai mare calitate a fratelui dumneavoastră. Urmează întrebarea. Este fratele dumneavoastră veriga slabă? Absolutely not. My brother and I are very different people. I think that's what makes us a strong team. When you have two people who are exactly the same, then one of them is always irrelevant. You don't need them. If two people are the same, you can do it with one. We're very different people. He's stronger than me in many ways. We're actually such a good team because we're opposites in some ways. My brother is very good at being permanently positive and not having much interest in trying to fix the situation. I'm the opposite. I'm the one who's sitting there reading all the legal papers, trying to learn Romanian law to understand how they can lock me in a jail cell when a girl already admitted she was lying and said she'd get an Oscar for lying. I thought that they must have broken European law. And my brother was like, let's just relax. We'll get out. God will fix it. So we're very different. I think these differences make us strong. If you look at a chessboard, a bishop and a knight are different pieces and they move in different ways, but they're equally powerful. And when they unite and do their jobs correctly, that's when you win the game. Same with a king and a queen, same with a man and a woman, same with a husband and wife. I think that's how the world works. And my brother's certainly not the weaker one. He's bigger than me. He's 110 kilo. I'm only 93 kilos, so he's a lot taller and heavier than I am. And uh, we possess unique qualities and we make sure we work as a team to combine them to always find the favorable state of mind for the situation. And as a team, the Tate brothers have never lost. Never once. As a team, we have never lost any scenario ever. We have unmatched perspicacity and we are ultimately successful in all realms of human endeavor. And I love my brother very much. Mulțumesc. Mergem cu întrebare roșie. Pe 20 iunie 2023 ați fost trimis în judecată împreună cu fratele dumneavoastră, Tristan Tate, și cu cele două presupuse complice, Georgiana Nagel și Luana Radu, numite de presă Îngerii lui Tate. Acuzațiile care vi se aduc sunt constituirea unui grup infracțional organizat, trafic de persoane în formă continuată, viol în formă continuată, acces ilegal la un sistem informatic și alterarea integrității datelor informatice, instigare și lovire sau alte violențe. Eu nu o să vă întreb dacă sunteți sau nu vinovat. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Ce păcate aveți? Hmm. We all sin. I think most religions describe as us born with sin. In regards to going to court and access to information systems and these kind of things, I don't even know what that's about. I literally have no idea what they're talking about. I don't think I'm accused of that. That might be one of the girls. I'm not sure I'm not allowed to speak to them. Uh, I don't spend much time analyzing my case because the whole thing's such a joke. It's going to be thrown out soon anyway. So I deal with my life. But what sins do I commit in life? Well. We all sin sometimes, don't we? We could always be better. I try every day to make sure I make a positive impact on the world. Please visit tatepledge.com. I literally restore eyesight to poor people in Gambia and I literally feed children in Syria. Every single day there are thousands of people who eat a hot meal because of me. Vă întrebați ce păcate aveți? What do I do that is sinful? Well, 
We can all be prideful sometimes. We can all be aggressive sometimes. We can all make mistakes. I'm trying to think of something I do. I don't live a sinful life. I don't drink alcohol. I don't take drugs. I'm more pure and clean than most people on the planet. And I want to make that clear. If most people have been through a two-year decaught investigation at the level I've been through, all of their dirty laundry would be all over the news. What dirty laundry have they found for me? That I own a nice car? That I'm rich? That's, that's the worst they could find. They couldn't find any drugs, couldn't find any prostitutes, couldn't find any latent homosexuality, couldn't find anything. I'm talking with you. I want to understand. Just so. What do you want? What are my sins? I want to answer the question. Let me think of something wrong I do. I have sex outside of wedlock. That's a sin, isn't it? Should I get married? Maybe. What else? Speeding. I sped once. I did 101 kilometers per hour on 100, and I'm sorry for that. I would like to apologize to the Romanian state and to God. I'm not that. Not to mind the party. Fratele dumneavoastră se consideră o victimă colaterală în războiul în care dumneavoastră sunteți implicat. Îl citez pe Tristan Tate. Sunt vinovat prin asociere. Urăsc să spun asta, dar sunt pe deplin conștient de faptul că nu aș fi fost interzis pe platformele sociale sau probabil nu aș fi ajuns în închisoare dacă nu aș fi fost fratele lui Andrew. Și dacă îl incriminează pe bune și îl trimit înapoi, ar fi bine să mă trimită și pe mine sau o să mă bag eu singur în închisoare. Vreau să știu ce simțiți când fratele dumneavoastră face astfel de afirmații. Urmează întrebarea. V-ați certat vreodată cu fratele dumneavoastră? Sure, my brother and I have had slight disagreements. Probably once a year, maybe twice a year, we'll have a five minute disagreement, maybe which will end amicably. We understand that we have enough outside enemies to deal with without ever needing to turn on each other for something petty and small. And there are certain realms inside of life where he has the authority and certain realms where I have the authority. So our roles are quite clearly defined and it's quite easy to pull rank depending on what we're discussing. So yeah, we've disagreed a little bit, but we've never ever come close to any genuine disagreement because we're Tates and the Tates are already under attack by the Matrix and the Satanists and the evil in the world, and we must stick together to stand a chance to survive, and we don't have time to be arguing with each other. So, no, I mean, in jail, we never argued once. Tristan has never complained that he lost his accounts or went to jail because he's my brother, because a lot of people have said to him, Tristan, you didn't even do anything. It's just because you're Andrew's brother, they threw you in there, just to try and make a group, because they're just making it up. And we never argued about it. You know, we're a team. We approach life together. That means the good and the bad. What's the point in having a brother who's going to cry when he goes to jail with you, but is happy to sit on a private jet with you? No, you're brothers. Private jets, <laughs> jail, house arrest, home, court. We approach life together and we're a team and we smile and laugh every day, no matter where we are, jail cell or not. We're still going to smile. We're still going to laugh. And uh, I really believe we have an unbreakable bond. I cannot see a scenario in which we would ever stop being brothers. It's just simply impossible. No, 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 no. We sparred, I mean, training. Uh, he's big, he's, he's hard to hurt, but we've never had a real fight. We've never, we've never had a serious disagreement that threatened our brotherhood ever. Mulțumesc, mergem mai departe. Sunteți cel mai mare dintre cei trei copii ai familiei, în timp ce fratele dumneavoastră, Tristan, este la fel de cunoscut. Aveți și o soră despre care se știu puține lucruri. Mătușa dumneavoastră, Elizabeth, a dezvăluit că între nepoții ei, Tigrul, ursul și bocănilă, așa cum v-a părăclit tata, există diferențe mari de studii. O citez. Sora lor s-a ținut de școală. Andrew și Tristan nu au făcut-o. Și cred că asta e cam îndepărtat. Diferența de educație. Presa a notat că în timp ce frații Tate s-au mulțumit cu liceul, sora lor a devenit o avocată de succes. Într-o postare online, v-ați ironizat sora așa. Știu la ce vă gândiți. Cum este posibil ca Andrew Tate să aibă o soră cu un IQ mic? Dar s-a dovedit că primul copil este întotdeauna cel mai inteligent. Ea este al treilea copil în familie. Cui pasă de al treilea în orice? Vreau să știu dacă sora dumneavoastră este cea mai educată dintre frații Tate și dacă o invidiați. Urmează întrebarea... De ce o disprețuiți pe sora dumneavoastră? I don't despise my sister, she's my family. We have differences. And I welcome her to her life and her point of view. 
She disagrees with a lot of my life and my points of view, and she's entitled to do that. Regarding the education system, I think the education system is not designed to free minds. In fact, it's designed to enslave minds and create workers. I, design, I think the education system is designed to prepare you for slavery inside of the matrix. I've never met anyone who's rich and said, how did you get rich? And they said, oh, I went to university. Never. So I don't think that the education system is designed to actually make anybody rich, but only enslave them. And that's one of the reasons why I have the school I have online that teaches people how to actually get rich because modern education doesn't. Um, I think modern education indoctrinates you and prepares your mind for slave programming, and my sister and I have different points of view because of that, but she's welcome to them. She's an adult, and she has her conclusions, and I have mine, and that's the beauty of life, is that we're all different, and we all have different points of view, and that's what keeps the world turning, right? There are some people who... Când ați vorbit ultima dată cu sora dumneavoastră? I spoke to my sister when I left jail. We had a conversation. And uh, she was very afraid and worried and said that um, what they've done to us, they couldn't do in a Western country with no evidence. And I explained that God is in charge and God is watching all things. And it's funny how life works out. And the judges have been very fair to us. And the judges will let us go in the end. And she was, yeah, she was concerned as a sister should be. But I have nothing against my sister a lot. That's just internet sensationalism. When you're one of the most famous men in the world, people come up with wild theories about everything, including your own familiar relationships. So. Mulțumesc. Informațiile apărute în presă îi prezintă pe bărbații din familia dumneavoastră ca fiind niște duri. Astfel, bunicul, Emory Tate Senior, care a servit în armata americană în timpul celui de-al doilea război mondial și ulterior a devenit avocat în Chicago, era foarte sever și obișnuia să aplice corecții fizice copiilor săi cu o curea. Tatăl dumneavoastră, Emory Tate Junior, sergent în cadrul forțelor aeriene ale SUA, își dorea ca fiii săi să nu dea dovadă de nicio slăbiciune. Pe de altă parte, presa a notat că în familia Tate, femeile au fost cele care și-au construit cu adevărat o carieră de succes. Bunica dumneavoastră, Emma Cox Tate, a înființat o companie de camioane, iar mătușile au cunoscut succesul în afaceri și în domeniul academic și juridic. Vreau să știu dacă performanțele femeilor din familia Tate v-au influențat atitudinea față de reprezentantele sexului frumos. Urmează întrebarea. Au luat femeile din familia dumneavoastră fața bărbaților? That's a good question. I mean, my brother, my father had eight sisters. So it was him and eight sisters. So there was a lot more women than him. When you say overtake, that's a difficult question to answer because you have to quantify success. If you're going to quantify it financially, then some of my aunts were more financially successful than my father, who was a professional chess player and was semi-nomadic. But I think that male and female success can be measured differently. And I think that there are women who perhaps have never made any money, but they have a bunch of beautiful children, which they raise, and they're a good wife to their husband. I consider them successful women. So it's very difficult to say how you would measure it. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say the women overtook the men or the men overtook the women. I think that my family has been pretty successful in all realms, and I love that my family was big. I went to my, my grandmother's reunion. She's 93 now. She's still alive. I would love to go see her, but unfortunately I'm trapped inside of Romania for something I didn't do. But when I last saw her, we went to a family reunion, and Because she had so many children, she had 11 children, and they all had children. We, I saw nearly 80 people in one room that came from one woman, four generations. I thought that was incredible. I consider her exceptionally successful for that alone. So perhaps the women did. I mean, all of the women in my family had a lot of children and big, beautiful families, and I consider them successes for that, and I'm going to try and replicate that and do my very best to do the same thing. Sunt mândre femeile din familia dumneavoastră de dumneavoastră? Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't have any negative interactions with females in my family or outside of it. I want to make that also clear to the world. BBC can print, I'm a misogynist all day long because I believe that men should go to war and women should stay home. But every single woman I meet is nice to me and I'm nice to her. I've never had a single woman approach me on the street and say anything negative ever. It's never happened. It probably never will. And the mainstream media, especially in the West, is nothing but a propaganda machine. All they do is lie and try and paint narratives. So nobody believes their narratives anymore. They've overstepped and they lied too much and their garbage isn't flying anymore. I'm not a misogynist and no, no women in my family have a problem with me. I'm not that. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. 
Mergem cu o întrebare roșie. Atât dumneavoastră, cât și fratele dumneavoastră, v-ați arătat recunoscător față de mama care a depus eforturi mari pentru a vă crește. Prin urmare, ați promis că veți avea grijă ca ei să nu îi lipsească nimic. Presa din Marea Britanie a notat însă că, în ciuda popularității și a luxului pe care l-ați afișat de-a lungul timpului în mediul online, mama dumneavoastră locuiește și acum în aceeași zonă sărăcăcioasă din Luton. Mai mult, după ce în România au început probleme noastre cu legea, Jurnaliștii străini subliniau faptul că mama va șters din lista de prieteni de pe rețea de socializare și că ar fi declarat așa. Nu sunt deloc de acord cu ce fac și spun băieții mei. Eu nu i-am crescut așa. Urmează întrebarea roșie. V-a renegat mama? No, my mother loves me. I spoke to her this morning. Me and my mother are super close and she's fully retired and lives a life of luxury because of me. She's a millionaire because of me. I think in regards to her deleting us off a social network, that didn't happen because I don't have social media. What she did is she was replying to a media article that was lying about us, saying I didn't raise my boys this way. The media article is not true. In regards to people saying she lives in poverty and Luton and lives a bad life, I actually find it quite reassuring that me at my status with my enemies, both from the legal system and outside of the legal system, because trust me, I have enemies everywhere, have no idea where my mother lives and they believe she lives there. That's fine with me. I'd be very foolish to come on TV and say, no, she lives in this mansion. My mother is very well taken care of. The first thing I did when I got rich is retire her. She spends 70% of her year on holiday, on cruise ships and on private planes. And I love her very much. She did the best she could for me. And uh, she focused on me and I couldn't have wished for a better upbringing because I believe the upbringing are strict parents and no money. And I had no money and very strict parents. And she's the one who is still alive. Unfortunately, my father is waiting for me on the other side. And I'm going to make sure she lives the best possible life experience in her final years. Mulțumesc. Continuăm cu întrebare roșie. V-ați pierdut tatăl pe 17 octombrie 2015, după ce a suferit un infart chiar în timpul unui turneu de șah. Îndurerat, ați spus așa, tata nu s-a temut niciodată de nimic, nici măcar de moarte. A fost un bărbat adevărat, un mascul alfa. În 2015, dumneavoastră nu erați doar fiul unuia dintre cei mai mari șahiștei lumii, ci și un nume în kickboxing. Atunci presa nota că aveați deja peste 9 milioane de dolari câștigate din sport, iar paparații vă fotografiau la volanul unui bolid de lux. În acest context, a fost cu adevărat surprinzătoare declarația fratelui dumneavoastră. Îl citesc pe Tristan Tate. Tata nu a avut niciodată bani în toată viața lui. Când a murit, avea 16 dolari în buzunar. I-am plătit eu în mormântarea. Urmează întrebarea roșie. V-ați făcut datoria de fiu față de tatăl dumneavoastră? My duty is ongoing. I don't think my duty will ever be complete. I think the reason people talk about my father today is because I'm such an exceptional person. If I was a nobody, if I didn't get up early every morning and try hard and fight and work and do 18 hour days and try and pull off the impossible and make money and stay in good shape and learn how to speak and come and do television shows all around the world and try and educate people and help the youth and make them disciplined and hardworking. If I didn't do all of these things, nobody would be talking about me. And by extension, nobody would be talking about my father. My father lives forever. His memory lives on forever because of my exceptionalism. And I must continue to be exceptional. So his life story is so integral, integral to mine that he is discussed at length permanently. It's also important that my son does the same thing. All of my sons must be such exceptional individuals that they talk about their fathers, me, for eternity. That's the point of having children. That's the point of a bloodline and a dynasty. That's how kings have always operated. So I don't think my job to him will ever be complete. If I was just waking up feeling a little bit lazy and not feeling like going to the gym and sitting around in bed, then I would be failing my father because then no one would talk about him or me. But I don't allow that to happen and I never will. And my children will never allow me to be forgotten either. And in 200 years from now, they'll still be talking about the name Tate because we will always be the most disciplined, the most hardworking, the most dedicated, the most compendious, the most capable, fearsome predators on the planet. I'm not having children for any other reason and that's the reason my father had me. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. Odată cu arestarea dumneavoastră, v-au fost indisponibilizate și sequestrate 15 terenuri și clădiri situate în județele Ilfov, Prahova și Brașov, 15 autoturisme de lux, 
14 ceasuri de lux, două lingouri și o medalie, părțile sociale deținute în cadrul la patru firme și sumele de 86.000 de lei, 52.000 de euro, 17.000 de dolari, 10.000 de lire sterline, dar și echivalentul a 384.000 de dolari, sumă existentă în portofele de criptomonedă. Dumneavoastră ați declarat că DICOT va confiscat în total 15 milioane de euro și v-ați arătat surprins că v-au fost sequestrate toate autoturismele din garaj, deși unele erau proprietatea unor prieteni. Dacă în 2015 dumneavoastră declarați că ați fi trilionar, în 2022 jurnaliștii scriau că averea dumneavoastră s-ar ridica la 50 de milioane de dolari, știre contrazisă de fanii dumneavoastră, care susțin că ați avea 300-400 de milioane de dolari. Vreau să știu la cât se ridică averea dumneavoastră. Urmează întrebarea... Sunteți mai sărac decât se crede? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what's believed. But I'm on television here and I'm within Romania, so let me be very professional with how I answer this question. I think Decot seized around 15 million euro. My some would estimate that's only 5% of my money and it wouldn't bother me at all. But those people would be crazy, of course. So I had 15 million and 1 euro. That was my fortune, and unfortunately, 15 million of it's left, so I have, one million, well, I have one euro left, which I'm trying to stretch. You know, I managed to get a taxi here, he gave it to me for free. I'm left with one euro. But uh, my people eat, I live a good life, I take care of everyone I love. I think anybody with a brain who understands how money works and understands how the upper echelons of life works understands that if you're truly rich, you don't even know what you have, and it's not in your name, and it's spread out, and all around the world and it's very difficult to value certain things at certain times. Sometimes you can have 700 million, sometimes you can have 900 million, depends when you sell. But um, none of this concerns me, of course, because I had 15 million and one euro and Decot took 15 million away. So I have one euro left, that's it. Sorry, ladies, one euro left, that's all I have. And I'm doing my very best to make it last as long as possible. I'm not that, Mulțumesc. Odată cu dumneavoastră au ajuns după gratii și cele numite de presă îngerii lui Tate, cele două complice acuzate că ar fi constrâns mai multe fete să creeze conținut pornografic. Georgiana Nagel se prezenta pe rețele de socializare ca model, femeie de afaceri și chiar asistenta dumneavoastră personală și a lui Tristan. Tânăra a fost văzută de mai multe ori la volanul bolizilor dumneavoastră, deși ați afirmat că femeile nu pot conduce. Mai mult, presa a speculat că ar fi fost chiar iubita dumneavoastră și că ați avea împreună un copil. În ceea ce o privește pe Luana Radu, jurnaliștii au scris că a renunțat la uniforma de polițistă pentru a face videochat, fiind considerată șefa modelelor din studioul dumneavoastră. Urmează întrebarea? Câtă încredere aveți în femei? How much do I trust women? That's not a gendered question. How much do I trust people? We can apply that to everybody. Everybody has their own selfish motivations, but I have a pretty tight circle. Nobody's failed me yet. Women can be more emotional than men, so it can be easier to use emotional arguments on them and force them or scare them. For example, let's imagine you're a corrupt police organization. What you'd do is you'd call 2,000 women who know a man. All of them would defend him. You'd look for one which is particularly scared and vulnerable. You'd bring her into the office and you'd try and force her to flip and threaten her and make it clear that she might get in trouble or she might have to pay legal fees if she doesn't do what they want. And then you try to imagine victims this way to put famous people in jail. This is what a corrupt organization would do. But I do trust people who are close to me. In regards to the two girls who put in jail, Georgiana is my personal assistant. I mean, she literally paid my electricity bill and did the shopping. I don't know how that makes her mafia, but who knows? Uh, the other one, I thought her name was Ellie. I thought her name was something else until she was arrested. I only met her twice in my life. I didn't even know her, but supposedly we're a group, we're a mafia group. I literally didn't know this person, but I met her twice. So they just threw us all together desperate to make an imaginary case. But. I mean, they told the truth to the police. They said the brothers have done nothing wrong and we told the police the truth also, saying that nobody's done anything wrong. And I trust them because I trust that in the end, most people are pretty good hearted and I don't hang around with snakes. We have a saying in England, birds of a feather flock together. Meaning if you're a snake, your friends are snakes. But if you have a pure heart and you do the right thing and you never snake anyone, you don't ever turn on anyone, 
it's not very often that people will do the same thing to you. So perhaps I just attract good people because I'm a good person. Maybe I'm magnetic, I don't know. But that's my answer. Mulțumesc. Vă citez. Numele meu este Andrew Tate și sunt cea mai competentă persoană de pe întreaga planetă pentru a vă învăța despre interacțiunile dintre bărbați și femei. Pe mine toate femeile pe care le văd pe stradă mă iubesc. Vreau să știu de ce credeți că vă iubesc femeile. Urmează întrebarea. Câte femei vă urăsc? Hmm. I don't know the exact answer. A lot of the things I say on the line, we have to remember are hyperbole. Like when you're online, you exaggerate to a degree. To sit and say that everything everybody says on YouTube, they mean literally, is asinine. And if any justice system or any media organization wants to genuinely do that, they're going to struggle with every single YouTuber that exists. I've said I'm an astronaut. Does anyone believe I've been to the moon? I've said I'm James Bond. Do I work for MI6? No. You say a lot of things on the internet which are exaggerated. However, I mean, I have a pretty happy social life with both men and women. I'm sure there are some women who hate me. I'm sure there might be some radical, hard, left-wing feminists who believe that transgender women are actually men and that men should be able to compete in women's sports and that men can have babies and all this true insanity. I'm sure there are some Satanists who genuinely hate me, both male and female. I have no interest in interacting with these people or finding out how many there are. I want to stay as far away from them as possible. I want a very nice life with very nice people who are logical and rational and see the beauty in the world. And when I meet people like that, they seem to be pretty polite to me and I'm often pretty polite back. I've yet to have a negative interaction with anybody, male or female, on the street since the dawn of my fame ever in any country, ever. So perhaps I'm actually loved. Perhaps the media is lying. Perhaps when they come along and say, Andrew, the disgraced misogynistic influencer who believes that men should go to war and women should be protected because he's an evil person who's hated, perhaps they're lying like they lie about absolutely everything else. Perhaps everything they've ever printed is a lie. Perhaps the beginning of every war they've ever started was a lie. Perhaps the vaccine they put in our arms was a lie. Perhaps everything's a lie. Perhaps people are starting to wake up and realize that all the Matrix does is lie to enslave us. And the fact that they hate me so much and try and convince the world that I'm such a bad person is because they see me as a threat, a threat to their monopoly on information because it is with that that they purport the lies which instigate the largest injustices on the planet. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. Mergem cu întrebare roșie. Clipurile video în care susțineați că femeile nu pot conduce mașina sau că victimele violurilor, vă citez, trebuie să poarte responsabilitatea pentru atacurile asupra lor, au fost masiv distribuite pe social media de adepții dumneavoastră și au ajuns să numere chiar și peste 12 miliarde de vizualizări. În iulie 2022, numele dumneavoastră l-a depășit în căutările Google pe cel al fostului președinte american Donald Trump sau pe cel al vedetei Kim Kardashian. Specialiștii au explicat că numărul mare al celor care empatizează cu dumneavoastră reflectă gradul de nemulțumire al bărbaților care consideră că în războiul sexelor femeile au început să piardă tot mai mult din feminitate. În ultima perioadă însă dumneavoastră nu v-ați mai arătat atât de vehement la adresa femeilor. Vreau să știu dacă ați luat în calcul că odată cu această schimbare de atitudine v-ați putea pierde din faima câștigată pe rețele de socializare. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Mai este Andrew Tate un mascul alfa? Good question. First, let me clarify some of the things you said. One, I said women can't park. Take me to jail. I stick by it. I'm sorry. I don't think women can park very well. I've seen too many accidents. Take me to jail. Secondly, when I talked about the fact that women need to bear responsibility for rape, that is the worst possible rewording of my point ever, deliberately by the mainstream media in the West because they are trying to vilify me because they're afraid that I am telling the truth about what's happening in the world. That is not what I said. I said that as a woman, the primary thing you should do is take care of your own personal safety to make sure that you're not put in a position where you easily could be raped. Because I was having an argument with a feminist who was saying that men shouldn't rape. And I said, I agree. Men shouldn't rape. It's heinous. It's disgusting. Men shouldn't rape. But men also shouldn't steal. 
But guess what? We don't live in a perfect world. And we know that sometimes people do steal. So you put your money in a bank. You don't leave it on the floor outside because someone will steal it. For the same reason why a woman should get a taxi home, not walk by herself through a dark park in the middle of the night. Not because she shouldn't be allowed to. Well, she should be allowed to walk home at night. I should be allowed to put my money on the floor. But the world's not perfect and bad things happen and people should take responsibility for themselves. The same way I will take responsibility for my money and put it in a bank. You should take responsibility for your personal safety and make sure you're not put in a position where something easily could bad happen to you. And they took that statement, all of the 20 minute conversation and condensed it into the fact that I said that women are responsible for their own rapes, which is garbage because that's what the MSM does. Just like Donald Trump said, fake news. As for being an alpha male, that's for other people to decide. I don't have to sit long and decide whether I am or not. Depends how you clarify it. Depends how you want to quantify what an alpha male is. Am I successful? Am I capable? Am I competent? Yes. Can I do whatever I want to do? Yes. Have I ever failed? Truthfully, no. I consider myself an extremely fearsome predator, but it's up to other people to I come to their own time. conclusions. They can decide I'm something else if they decide, but I'm not too interested in anyone else's opinion but my own. So I would have to ask for more information on what an alpha male is before I could properly answer the question. Ok. Mergem mai departe. Mulțumesc. Cu toate că de la venirea în România în 2014, paparații v-au surprins în compania unei singure vedete locale, respectiv cântărația Lidia Buble, în 2020 a ținut prima pagină a tabloidelor internaționale după ce ați convins-o pe fica lui Jordan Peterson, unul dintre cei mai influenți analiști ai lumii, să vină în România pentru o întâlnire cu dumneavoastră, deși era căsătorită și devenise mama de doar câteva luni. În schimb, fratele dumneavoastră s-a dovedit un mare admirator al frumuseților autohtone și a fost surprins în compania unor vedete precum Otilia Bilionera, Alexandra Stan sau Bianca Drăgușanu, cea care acum este imaginea unui studio de videocet ale cărui afișe au împânzit tot Bucureștiul. Vreau să știu dacă sunteți în relații contractuale cu Bianca Drăgușanu. Urmează întrebarea. Sunt vedetele din România prea mici pentru dumneavoastră? Absolutely not. And I don't really see myself as a celebrity. I like I said I treat all people with respect. I think that the hard working average normal man is far more important than most celebrities. I actually have more respect for the man who gets up at six o'clock every morning and goes and digs holes in the road and comes home late at night to feed his family than I do for most celebrities, I'll be honest, because he has a much harder existence than most celebrities do. And I will treat him with absolute respect. So I'm respectful to all people. Bianca's very nice. Last time I spoke to her, she was always nice to me. I have nothing bad to say about Bianca. I can't comment on all of Tristan's love life. I'm not sure what he's up to all of the time, but I'm sure he's enjoying himself. And, uh, Yeah, I don't, I don't view myself as a person with X amount of views, so I'm above X amount of people. I don't do that. I just live my life and tell the truth, and it is what it is, and I'll have conversations with anyone, famous or otherwise. I, I don't see myself as above anybody. Deci, tu te-ți în relație contractuale cu Bianca Drăgușanu? I have no contracts with her, and I have not even spoken to her or seen her in a long time, but last time I spoke to her, it was a very nice conversation, and I have nothing bad at all to say about her, and her, along with all people on earth, I wish her peace and happiness and the best. And I hope she is, is smiling every single day. And if I see her on the street, I'll make sure I say hello. It's as far as it goes. Mulțumesc. Continuăm. Împreza străină, una din fostele dumneavoastră partenere, v-a descris așa. Este foarte manipulator. Îi lipsește orice fel de empatie. Este narcisist și nu cred că este capabil să simtă dragoste. Prin prisma declarațiilor făcute de dumneavoastră de-a lungul timpului, multe persoane v-au catalogat ca misogin, însă dumneavoastră v-ați descris ca fiind un bărbat tandru și romantic. Mai mult, în perioada în care vă aflați în închisoare, atât dumneavoastră cât și Tristan, ați susținut că aveți copii pe care doriți să-i strângeți în brațe, însă presa a speculat că este doar un pretext pentru a scăpa din spatele gratilor prin metoda bebelușul. Câteva luni mai târziu, după eliberarea din închisoare, întrebat fiind dacă sunteți îndrăgostit, ați răspuns afirmativ. Urmează întrebarea. Iubiți pe cineva mai mult decât propria persoană? It's so interesting. The press said I only love my children to get out of jail. If that doesn't prove my point earlier that everything the press says is garbage, 
That is the bottom line proof. Anybody watching this who was thinking, maybe Andrew's lying. Maybe they don't just lie all the time. Maybe they print truth now and again. They said, I only love my children to get out of jail. Think of how asinine and ridiculous that is. Obviously, that is false because all they do is lie. Secondly, you found, supposedly, the press supposedly found some ex-girlfriend of mine who supposedly said bad things. If this person's real, which I highly doubt she is because the press usually just makes stuff up, we should go through Bucharest and interview 20 random men. And we should interview them and we should interview all their ex-girlfriends. And I bet all of their ex-girlfriends probably have something bad to say about them. If we're gonna start putting people in jail because, people's, because men's ex-girlfriends say something bad, I think you're gonna have to build much bigger jails. It's crazy. The question of was simple. You beat someone more than the own person? Yes. Absolutely. I love everyone more than myself. I love my children more than I love myself. I would die for my brother. I would die for my mother. I, I love a bunch of people more than myself. In fact, my entire life is putting people above me, putting other people's happiness above me. I believe that's what men do. Men stayed on the Titanic for the women and children. When you're a man, you're responsible for other people's physical and emotional happiness, of course. I wake up every day and work so that other people can enjoy the fruits of my labor. That's all I do. Every single person I love, in many ways, I love more than I love myself. And I think that every man who is capable is exactly the same. Mergem mai departe. V-ați născut într-o familie creștină și v-ați descris ca fiind, la rândul dumneavoastră, o persoană religioasă. Sunteți de părere că momentele grele prin care ați trecut, inclusiv perioada detenției, au fost un dar al lui Dumnezeu prin care să vă ajute să deveniți cea mai bună versiune a dumneavoastră. Vă citez. Dacă treci prin vremuri întunecate, bucură-te de ele. Dumnezeu ți-a dat aceste greutăți ca să-i poți arăta cât de puternic poți fi. Pe de altă parte, în 2022, în presă au apărut informații că v-ați convertit la islam. Iar unii jurnaliști au titrat așa. Tate profită de popularitatea sa în rândul bărbaților musulmani de extremă dreapta pentru a-și reabilita imaginea și pentru a se rebrandui. Urmează întrebarea, cât vă ajută Dumnezeu? I see God in all things. I get often asked about my reversion to Islam and people want me to compare it to Christianity or other religions and I refuse to do that because I don't feel qualified. I am a student of Islam, I am learning about the religion, and I don't ever see myself qualified to speak of God in an authoritarian manner. I am below God, and I respect God, and I respect his plans for me, he is the best of planners. I believe the world needs more God. I believe there is one God. Perhaps you can see different religions as different languages to say the same thing. Perhaps you can say the same sentence in different languages that mean the same thing. I'm not here to argue about different types of religion. But I think the world would be a better place if everybody was religious. And when you look at a lot of the problems in the world today, it's because people have forgotten that they are constantly watched and constantly judged. And if they steal with nobody watching, somebody else is still watching and they will pay the price for that. I chose Islam for a bunch of personal reasons. I feel God inside of Islam. It'd be very difficult for me to explain why I just do. But I respect all people of the book and all people who worship God and all people who go to their place of worship and live true lives. Those are my kind of people. And the only people I'm wary of or the only people I'm suspicious of is when somebody comes to me and says, there is no God, nothing matters. And when I meet those people, they're far more intimidating to me than any religious extremist. I think those are the people who will truly snake you or hurt you without any consequence. Those are the people who will do the most heinous actions. Continuum. Cred că sentimentul de depresie este real. Nu cred însă că depresia, ca boală clinică, este reală. Aceasta este una dintre declarațiile dumneavoastră pentru care în 2017 ați fost aspru criticat. Dumneavoastră a susținut însă că nu poți fi deprimat dacă îți controlezi energia emoțională și ați afirmat că, deși ați avut momente în care ați fost trist, nu v-ați permis niciodată să picați în depresie. Considerați că femeile și copiii sunt cei care vor să fie constant fericiți și ați mărturisit că pentru dumneavoastră fericirea înseamnă să fiți mândru de ceea ce faceți. Nu vă plac oamenii care plâng pentru că încearcă să îi manipuleze emoțional pe cei din jur. Vreau să știu când ați plâns dumneavoastră ultima dată. Urmează întrebarea. Care este cea mai mare frică a lui Andrew Tate?
Firstly, the last time I cried was when my father died, and it's not because I couldn't stop myself crying. I could have easily stopped myself, but I allowed myself to cry out of respect for him because I believe he deserved it as a mark of respect, and I've not cried since because, not because I try not to. I just genuinely don't feel the need. It's not very conducive to a solution. I'm solution and logic orientated, and I don't see the point in crying. It doesn't get much done. So that's the last time I cried. I have fears. I have things I don't like. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like the ocean. I don't like the dark water. Sharks and I have this crazy agreement. If I don't go in the water, they won't come to my house. And so far, it's been perfect. So I don't want to upset the sharks because everyone says there are no sharks, but you can't really see in there. There might be. So as long as I don't want sharks to turn up on my door like decaught, I'm going to stay out of the ocean. So I don't like the ocean. Maybe that's it. Heights. I'm not a big fan of heights, but I've been paragliding. I've been skydiving, but I'm not a big fan of it. But that's really it. Nothing else I'm truly afraid of. I'd like to give a more philosophical and deep, interesting answer. But I could give an answer regarding how I'm afraid of failing my bloodline and failing my dynasty and people forgetting the name Tate because I wasn't exceptional enough. And I could probably talk for hours about that. But truthfully, I don't live in fear. I don't think that Fear can, fear can be a powerful motivator and fear can certainly make you strong sometimes when you take it and you feel nervous and you put it in the correct direction. I felt nervous before every fight and it made me react quicker. So I think fear can be useful. But in general, I don't live in fear because I have absolute faith in God and I tell the truth and I believe that he's the best of planners and everything is planned out exactly how it's supposed to be and that the bad people will face justice and the good people will walk free. So I live with a pure heart and I'm happy. I don't have time for fear, except for sharks. What's the mess? Mergem cu ultima întrebare și va fi o întrebare roșie. În videoclipurile postate pe rețele de socializare, ați afirmat că vă întâlniți cu fete de 18-19 ani pentru că puteți lăsa o amprentă asupra lor. După ce în 2014 v-au fost aduse în Marea Britanie acuzații de viol, pentru care nu au fost însă furnizate suficiente probe, multe dintre fostele dumneavoastră iubite au povestit că dacă în discuțiile online vă arătați tandru și atent și chiar vă opereați să le cumpărați bilete de avion pentru a veni în România, odată ajunse aici, le agresați nu doar verbal, ci și fizic, mai ales în momentele de intimitate. De-a lungul timpului, Dumneavoastră v-a plăcut să vă prezentați cu poreclele de King Cobra sau Cobra Tate, Cobra Regală, fiind cel mai mare șarpe veninos din lume. Urmează întrebarea roșie. Cât de periculos este Cobra Tate? First things first, let me clarify that initial sentence. I was talking on a Western dating show and we were discussing how when a woman truly loves a man, she adopts a lot of her man's worldviews. If a woman truly loves a man, she might like the same interests he likes or the same songs he likes or the same political party he likes. It's pretty common and normal inside of relationships. When I was discussing it, another guy across from me on the panel says, well, I just married my wife and she doesn't like any of my things. And I said, well, probably because she had 10 men she loved before and she's tired of it. And she's been through a bunch of love and hate and breakups and now she doesn't want to adhere to any of your worldviews. That's why, that's what I answered. And he said, well, you should, how would I avoid her in having men before me? And then we talked about how men who get with younger women, she's less likely to have relationships, et cetera, et cetera. It was a long conversation. That's the first thing I want to clarify there. Second thing, how dangerous is Cobra Tate? Cobra Tate is dangerous when he needs to be. I think any man who is capable is capable of violence. If you're a weakling as a man, if you're a complete weakling who can never be violent or do dangerous things, you're not a good man. Instead, you're just a, a coward and a weakling. You have to have the capability to be violent, the capability to do bad things and decide not to. There is a time and a place for all things in this world, including violence. There's a time and a place for a big, strong man to come along and be violent to protect somebody. So I'm extremely dangerous if I decide to be. However, I have absolute mental control and I understand when it's applicable and when it isn't. And I think any good man possesses that capability. When a weak man says violence is wrong, who cares about your opinion because you don't have the capability to be violent. It doesn't matter what you think. You can't do it even if you need to. Someone could break into your house and assault your mother. You couldn't be violent. So who cares what you think? All good men are dangerous. We just decide to not be dangerous unless we have to be dangerous. So how dangerous am I? Absolutely, I'm a very, very dangerous person. Dați mi un exemplu de momentul în care ați fost cel mai periculos de până acum. If somebody were to try and hurt someone I care about and love, they would... Exemplu concret din viața noastră. If somebody assaulted my girlfriend or tried to damage one of my children, they would face repercussion like they've never seen. I give you time. 
They would face a repercussion like they've never seen and could not expect. And I absolutely would be a formidable opponent in all realms. Of course, I would protect my family. Sună, absolutely. Sună a amenințare. Eu vreau să știu ce ați făcut concret. Apropo de cât de periculos ați fost până acum. I don't want to talk about things I have done in the past for reasons, but I am capable of doing what needs to be done to protect the people I care about, and I think all good men are. Fără limite? Sometimes life is limitless, unfortunately, yes. Mulțumesc. Acestea au fost cele 40 de întrebări. Mulțumesc în numele echipei mele pentru că sunteți aici, în fața mea. Cei care ne urmăresc acum văd pe micile ecrane un tabel. Ați răspuns tuturor întrebărilor mele și vă mulțumesc pentru acest lucru. Ne-au mai rămas la dispoziție 7 minute. Dacă sunt chestiuni, ce v-ați fi dorit să vă întreb și eu nu am făcut-o. Dacă sunt lucruri din biografia dumneavoastră ce mi-au scăpat. Sau dacă sunt pur și simplu chestiuni pe care vreți să le menționați, desigur nu vom folosi toate minutele rămase, dar este momentul nostru de dialog, după care va urma evaluarea mea. Vă ascult. Yeah, I guess I just want to say, I think there's a lot of confusion from people about why I chose Romania. They don't understand why a rich foreigner would choose Romania instead of Monaco or Dubai or the places they normally move. And I think not a lot of Romanians actually appreciate how beautiful their country is. You have a country which is safe on the streets. There's God on every corner. You can see churches everywhere. You have amazing nature. You have beautiful food. You have kind-hearted people. In general, women can walk around at night without danger. Children are out playing without danger. I mean, it's not a perfect country, of course, and it has its problems like all countries do. But I think all in all, it's a truly beautiful society, and I'm 0% Romanian in any regard. I just came here to visit a long time ago. And I liked it, and I fell in love with the place, and I decided to make a life here. And Romania does suffer from a terrible international reputation. Most people outside of Romania who've never been here don't understand how beautiful and safe it is, and I've tried very hard for a long time to make people understand that it's actually a great place. And I feel like I've been a massive beacon for the country for a very long time, because everyone was so intrigued why I chose to live here. And I think the country is improving. I mean, I've been here seven years, and in the seven years I've been here, I've seen a lot change. And I guess all in all, I just want to say that I do love this country. I think it's a fantastic place to live a life, and I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave because a corrupt prosecutor is trying to make himself famous. I will not leave Romania ever. And I want to stay. Nici dacă v-ați dori să plecați, nu aveți cum momentan. Urmează evaluarea mea. Not now, but even when I can leave, I have no intention of leaving. I want to stay here and live a life here, and I'm, I hope Romania's reputation is repaired despite this person's corrupt actions. Urmează evaluarea mea. Să știți că am făcut multe interviuri la viața mea, de cele mai multe ori cu oameni puternici, cunoscuți, de foarte multe ori cu oameni controversați. Nimeni niciodată, niciun domn, să vă numesc domn, pe care l-am avut în fața ochilor mei, nu a vorbit în termeni atât de înălțător despre propria persoană ca dumneavoastră. mi a spus așa în repetate rânduri. Excepțional, profesionist, magnetic. Ei bine, așa o să încep și o evaluare. Excepțional, profesionist, magnetic, toate aceste chestiuni țin de o extraordinară abilitate uh, în oratorie. Și nu doar atât, o extraordinară capacitate de lobby. De aici toate um, chestiunile pe care le-ați auzit despre dumneavoastră, cum că ați fi manipulator. Când vine vorba de chestiuni ce țin de justiție și de justiția română, chestiuni ce vizează vinovăția sau nevinovăția dumneavoastră, nu o să mă pronunț. Aștept să vedem ce va spune justiția în cazul dumneavoastră. Și mai apoi, îmi doresc tare mult să mai veniți odată la 40 de întrebări și să mă lăsați să-l cunosc pe Andrew Tate, așa cum este el când nu are garda permanent ridicată pe toată durata emisiunii. Ați fost în gardă. În cazul dumneavoastră, vă înțeleg. Alături de mine au fost telespectatorii mei și împart această evaluare a mea cu cei care ne-au urmărit. Dau dreptul și în posibilitatea fiecăruia să creadă despre Andrew Tate ceea ce simte că este corect și autentic. Mulțumesc mult pentru că sunteți aici la 40 de întrebări. A fost um, un interviu um, interesant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mult succes! Thank you. Dragi spectatori, am ajuns la finalul emisiunii 40 de întrebări. Săptămâna viitoare vom fi din nou în fața dumneavoastră cu un nou invitat și cu noi întrebări. Mulțumesc pentru atenție! La revedere!